everyone. Oh. Yours truly, Chris Levi13. I'm here with another episode of the Vault 13 podcast right here on youtube.com slash Chris Levi13. But as you can see right there next to me, we got the one, the only, the god of retro, Mr. Rockstar himself, T Belly. So say hello to everybody that may come by this right here, this podcast episode of T Belly. What's up, YouTube? Well, if you didn't know, it's me, your guy. T Belly, yeah, that's um, yep, that's T Belly right there, everybody. You know him, you know how he is, and all that. But yeah, to start things off, I just real quickly want to dive right into people. Will not waste any of your time. You know all my social media stuff down there in the description box below. And obviously, with every podcast host that has a guest, their stuff is the first stuff down in the link below. So definitely go check out T Belly and all his stuff. But anyway, introduce yourself to everybody. Tell everybody a little bit about what you are right here on the platform of YouTube and social media. So what's up guys? I'm a old school veteran YouTuber. I'm on like my fourth or fifth channel right now. So back in 2017, I decided to start a gaming channel more focused on like Nintendo Switch and old school Nintendo collecting kind of. And it just went from a channel about a bunch of unboxings that was low quality, low production. And one day I was just asked by a group of people to, hey, why don't you live stream we're bored mm -hmm. and i just got my phone and i started live streaming so what my channel has become is retro and modern gaming live streams mostly retro but i do mix in a lot of modern games as well and some videos i try to get videos out i don't get out as many as i would like but i'm mostly a retro gaming content creator where i i beat the biggest baddest hardest games of all time pretty much and that's pretty much what i do i take a challenge I take it head on and I always win. I don't lose. We might lose a few times, but the end product is a winning run at the end. So that's pretty much what I do. Just have fun. I drink. I engage with the crowd. And uh, oh, cool. pretty much this year, I started doing something where we're doing like a gaming podcast. So on Mondays, I do a gaming podcast now. And that's pretty much the whole channel. Gaming podcast, retro gaming live streams, modern gaming live streams with occasional videos here and there. So that's nice. what we do on YouTube. Nice, nice, nice. So, so since your channel, your, your T Belly channel, is focused around retro gaming and games in general, where did your love for gaming start? To get little people a little respect of, of hey, hey, like me, it starts off with Su Super Mario World, right? I tell you about the first game I remember, remember playing. But for you, where did gaming start for you? Well, the thing is, gaming is like my second favorite hobby. My favorite hobby is actually. The NFL, I love football. I'm a fan of the New York yeah. Giants. So that's my number one thing. So gaming is actually number two for me. It's not my most loved thing to do. But it started way back on the little gray box called the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. I remember seeing the console being played by my uncles. They were playing Super Mario Brothers, ironically. They were playing Gyro Might with Rob the Robot, as well as Duck Hunt. And I was just like, oh my God, what is this? And soon enough, I got a little older and I was able to get my own NES. And it's pretty much started there. And the games that really kicked it off for me was obviously the packing games. Super Mario Brothers with Duck Hunt. Uh, Mega okay. Man 2. And what's the other game? The Legend of Zelda. So those are like the main games to kick it off Man, for me. And, crazy. You know, was like, yeah. That's crazy. Do you think that, that, that those games you started with, just a little a little something that, 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 that popped in my head right here. You'd still be playing some of those games to this day. Yeah, yeah. There was a literally Mega Man was in my top five gaming franchises. It went down the list, but Mario and Zelda are like my first and third favorite gaming franchises to this day. And it all started on the originals. And uh the coolest memory about this was that me and my mom, my mom, yes, my mom, me and wow. her together, we beat the Legend of Zelda. No wow. strategy guy. Wow, I they never knew that. They, yeah, it did not exist. Strategy guys did not exist. There was no Nintendo power. It came a little bit after, and we beat The Legend of Zelda 1 together, me and my mom. So it was awesome. Awesome times, and the rest is history, man. Started on the NES, and now we're here with everything. Yeah. <laughs> Got everything. I mean, people, just to give you a little bit of respect over any time that we've been friends and all that, when he says it started on the NES all the way now, I've seen him virtually... Pretty much in the time that I've known him, play every console. He's played the Xbox One's Xbox Series S, the PlayStation Four. He's had PlayStation Threes, Twos in his house, all Dreamcast, all that in these last couple of years in his house. Whether it's 
his own system or he's borrowing from somebody, he's had it in there. And that's awesome. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. And that's facts. That's facts. Yeah. So so what so when your love for games started in any any NES and all the way today, what is your hmm, let me start off because I want to ask some YouTube related questions about your YouTube, but I want to still keep it on the gaming side right now. So where your favorite console if you start on the nes all the way to now and we're all the way at the switch the xbox series s and x and the playstation 5 you know and all that what is your favorite console well it, this is an easy answer for me it's a battle royale between two and there's a third there's a third challenger there is a challenger that has entered the ring but we'll get to that challenger yeah so the nes mm -hmm. the ps2 but before i say that there was a time when the N64 was my favorite console Ooh. for many, many years. But then I started playing N64 more recently, and I realized it's not as great as I remember it. <laughs> the yeah. NES was towards the bottom of my list, and it pretty much moved up. So right now, it's like NES, PS2 is like right there. I can't really pick one. They're both like right there. And there's this new console that I have that I have it on tier. And it's very early, the PlayStation 5. So... Ah, NES, PS2, PS5. I'm going by fun factor that I'm having with the console, yeah. games that I'm playing. So it's like NES and PS2 and the PS5 is like right there. Like, hey, I'm here. When this console generation is done, I might take your spot. And I think by the time the PS5 is done, I'll have a clearer decision. Is it the yeah. NES, the PS2, or the PS5? But that's... That's it for me, though. Yeah, NES, you, PS2, or PS5. Yeah, yeah. It's it's always hard to answer that question, for, even for me, because when you're a gamer, you have so many games you play, so many consoles you experienced, and all that, and you kind of have your nostalgia for like, hey, these ones are the ones that I can always go back to. Like you, it's PS2, it's NES. You can always go back to those titles. Yeah, the the, the N64 before you mentioned it there, but I can kind of see, like everybody said, that generation N64, PS1 is a good generation. But no offense to those games. Those games just so just don't hold up. It's like you get anything before anything after the Atari before to the N PS one and N sixty four. Those games hold up. They still look good today. Day if you have the right kind of way to put it on your modern TVs with retro retro cables and all that. But then when you get to that period pair, pair, pair between GameCube, Xbox, and PlayStation, that N sixty four, that Sega Saturn, that. P, uh, PS1 era, those games just kind of don't hold up, up, you know? It's not that they're bad games, because people still clamor for those games every day, Mario Kart, Banjo-Kazooie. It's just that, that, that visually, they don't hold up, and that kind of makes it the, the experience when you see so much other things that happened before it or after it, even that aren't this generation, still hold up. Don't you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I would just clarify with this. HDMI mods make everything better. They make every game playable in high definition. Well, the two consoles that can't do that much better with HDMI mods is the N N64 and the PS1. Yeah. Even with an HDMI mod, they just they just don't compare I've to the I've never played them with, an, with a mod. Have you? Yeah, I've played them both with HDMI mod. It's the best picture you're going to get, but it's the PS1 and N64. Is it like and the reason I don't mention Saturn, because Saturn... It's full of 2D games. There's a bunch of 2D games on Saturn. More 2Ds than actual 3D games. Yeah. So that's why I don't bring up the Saturn because the Saturn could look as good as a Genesis Super Nintendo 32X, if yeah, not yeah. better. Yeah, I agree. So, and, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so, so ahead. not to interrupt you, but um, talking about that HDMI mod, I've never played with it that way. Is it like a 720p picture or a 1080p? What, what kind of picture is it when you see it? It's uh, Well, it depends which one you're using. Uh, usually you could go into settings, but it's just best to put it at 1080p because it still gives you a four by three aspect ratio. It does not like stretch out your screen. What, uh, is it, what it does is it replicates a CRT. It awesome. gives you the four by three, but it clarifies the picture and makes it high definition so you can actually see it and it okay. won't be all like rough okay. and jaggy. Okay, I was thinking that, that you did that and it would go 16 by nine and do all of that big widescreen. No, nah, no, nah. you can, I think you could do that in the settings, but you don't want to do that. You know, it's not yeah. meant for that. Yeah, so 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 now y'all get to a little taste of like what his channel is about and a little bit of like what's his favorite console and all that 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 before we dive into the YouTube questions and maybe I let him ask me a few questions. Let's go into the actual games. We talked about consoles. Let's go into actual games. So in your history of games, you you've spoken on Zelda and Mario being in your, in your top three three and all that. What are some of your favorite franchises? 
and all that and um and answering that question as well so we can get a little bit more i guess of a long answer what are some of your favorite franchises and what are maybe a franchise or two that maybe you'd want to see return that's what i'm gonna throw your way so that's well, like a two-part question so all yeah. right i got you i got you so well my favorite franchise it starts with zelda then god of war super mario brothers grant their photo castlevania right yeah. So when you, when you look at that, all of those Different. all of those games have releases within the last two years, this year, next year. So yeah. everything but Castlevania of those five. So I want to see Castlevania come back. We need a new Castlevania. No more of these collections, which I'm I'm grateful that we're getting them all, especially the new one that. But we need new Castlevania. Like seriously, 3D, 2D. I don't care. I mean, you look at games like Bloodstained, Super Meat Boy, they show you that. Even Hades, they show you that, you know, you don't need 3D super next-gen graphics to make a new great game. So yeah. we need Castlevania. Big time, dude. Yeah. And um, franchises, I mean, I, I gave you five, but there's other franchises like the Battletoads, which did return in 2020 on Xbox. Yeah. We have franchises like Double Dragon that are phenomenal. I love the Turtles. Contra is always a good one, always a hit. And my one of my favorites, the Ghosts and Goblins series. I love it. And it came back this year, 2021. We got a new Ghosts and Goblins, and they said, hey, we're going to give you the same experience from 1986. We're going to give you yeah, the hardest game yeah, of all time. Yeah. With things like 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 games like Dead, Dead Cells or even like the return to Ghosts and Goblins and even um, Battletoads, I feel like... All these collections because there's a lot more games with Castlevania, obviously, than those. Because Castlevania, like, like, like before they stopped making the games, it was like a whole bunch of games on the NES, Super NES, you know, even the even the 64 and all that, and and even PlayStation One. And there's so many games that they give you all these collections. Cause like, there's collections from the NES. There's collections for like, like the one they think they just released at the direct with uh, what is in it? Like the Game Boy GBA. Advance. Three yeah. GBAs, yeah, and one SNES, yeah. Yeah, and it's like like that game has so much, but I'm tired. I'm ready for that game franchise to be, come back because if you see these games, like Dead Cells is a game that that, that, that shows, or like um, the other one you mentioned that came out earlier this year. Uh, Bloodstain, 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 it's like that. Is 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 no. those games are influenced by Castlevania? So why don't Castlevania come back and show them? Hey, we're, we we did it back in the day. Here's how and how it is. You know, it's how you do it, man. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of your favorite franchises, why is, to, to kind of let anybody that ever comes by this video or maybe knows you and wants to click on this, see us, give everybody a little bit of an explanation on why these three are your top three. Zelda, God of War, and Mario. Why are those franchises your top three? Okay, so Mario's always a toss-up with Mario and Grand Theft Auto, but I got to put Mario above because G- we've been on GTA Five for over 10 years now. Yeah. Going on 10 years, almost 10 years. It's like, yeah, you can take a notch down. So Mario, obviously, the first game I ever played was Mario. I like 3D platformers. I like 2D platformers. Mm -hmm. And Mario gives you everything. They give you 2D platformers, 3D platformers, and then they even have that hybrid 3D platformer with a 2D style, hence Mario 3D World and 3D Land, those two games. And they're just fun games. Just pick up, play. Everybody can play them. They're challenging. They're challenging sometimes. And I've pretty much never played a bad Mario game. Then um, I'm gonna skip Kratos for now. We'll go to number one, Zelda. Uh, I love the adventure puzzles. I love games that are adventure games that have puzzle solving in, in them. I love it, mm-hmm. including the action that's in them. It like it combines everything. You have action. You have puzzle solving. And you're adventuring, and it's just like you feel like you're the hero. You feel like you're Link. Yeah. So that's why I love Zelda. Plus, the fucking stories are always awesome. And then God of War. I mean, God of War, uh, Kratos. If if I'm gonna put myself, compare myself to a character, yeah, the closest character would be Kratos. I mean, when my son was born, literally the third or fourth day, he was three or four days old. I played God of War for the first time. It was the greatest wow. hits. It wasn't it wasn't a new game at all. Yeah. And I said, hey, let me pop this in. So I was like, I could kill two hours, three hours to the time to give him a box. And from that moment, from when you start on that ship and you're fighting the uh, sea monsters, I was just hooked from that moment. And 
Kratos is just so much like myself, you know. He's just a badass. He's aggressive. He bangs the girls. He doesn't lose. And he just gives two shits, man. He's awesome. And he's just, he's so likable, but he can also be hated. So it's like, it's just somebody that's like, yeah, that. it, it feels like you. It feels like me. And even to this point where the new Kratos, he, he's not as cool. He He's still a badass, but he's not as cool. He's more of a father. He's trying to do right and spread his son down the right path. You know, and it's like, I still love the game, but it's like, I just, it's just the hack and slash of God of War is just so satisfying. And with the new one, it's not as satisfying, but it can, at times it is. At times you just pull out the Spartan Rage, kick somebody's ass, and it's just a good feeling, you know, just bashing up big monsters head yeah. in the ground. It feels good, you know? Yeah, yeah that's, all, that's an awesome explanation of why those are your favorite, you know? You got one with Mario that anybody can pick up and play. You got Zelda right there that you have a lot of lore with and, 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 and plenty of games, 2D, 3D to play. And then you've got God of War, which if you want to play old school God of War, you go in there and play it, play it for however long you want to play it. Go in there, tear stuff up, just do this. Or if you want more story-driven, you go to 2018 God of War, and that's really, you know. But just like Zelda, God of War is based on a lot of lore. You know, yes, it is. You know, yes, it is. Greek mythology and then Norse. Now, now we're in Norse mythology. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I like the transition that they're taking. I wish it was more like, like obviously, like you, more and more of the hack and slash, like going there, tear stuff up. But obviously, I know that they're doing the stuff with the sun and everything like that. So I got to see maybe on the third game, fourth game that they're doing in this new new direction where they go. You know, but but. You know, I want to admit, hopefully this new one is coming out next year. They they go back in there. And there's at least a good chunk of an hour or two, couple of hours where you just go old school Kratos comes out, you know? Yeah, just whip some, man. That'd be awesome. Cause was, there uh, there is was, times. There is times in a new game where you do it, but it's post-game stuff. So it's like, it's yeah. there. It was like, ah. Uh, yeah. Cause no? just, just for me personally playing the old ones on the PS2 and a little bit on the PS3, I would love to feel a moment, like like it'd be a teaching moment for his son, where he just tell his son, go, go to the side, and he just go straight up in there, and you go old school Kratos, and you just tear like a boss or something up, and just like, for like a good little chunk of the game, and you're just like, boom, and you're like, oh, that fills you up, that'd be so <laughs> awesome. Cause I mean, you- I love fighting the trolls. The trolls give you that best experience. Yeah. And uh, they, I, I think the difference in gameplay is, is this is one way I break it down as simple as possible. The old game, you can do all these moves, right? There's mm-hmm. a bunch of moves you can do. In the new game, you have two special moves. And those special moves are usually moves you would do in the old game. So like the room where the move where Kratos takes his blades and he does a spinning cycle. Yeah. That's a special move. Where in the old games, that's a... It is a special move, but you can also do like four or five other special moves. So it's like they they held back the combat to make it more action adventure RPG ish instead yeah. of hack and slash. Yeah, which I mean it has worked out for them. But obviously, if you enjoyed that one, obviously the earlier ones, I see where you're coming from. Now yeah. moving away. Now that we talked about consoles, we talked about some games. Before I get let him him let loose some questions on me because people he's let me in. There's a few questions he's got for me, you know. And I like letting my guests get guests kind of ask me a few questions because sometimes I see these podcasts and I'm like they're all asking these questions and it's like 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 that, you know does that person ever have a question for the for the person that's sitting in the chair asking the questions? You never know, you know, because they might be excited to be on that podcast. But with that being said, getting more into the YouTube side, how do you feel about the journey that you've had on YouTube from whenever I first met you? And you're streaming on a cell phone to to learning about you also had a sports channel to everything that you've come through in the last few years to the friends and everything. How do you feel about your journey? Well, I feel like if I would have stuck with it from the beginning, I would be on a whole different path right now. And it sucks that that did not happen. But unfortunately, sometimes things are new, like YouTube. And like before this whole monetization thing, YouTube was a place where I only had 200 subscribers, but I was making over $200 a month. You know, that's just back when AdSense used to pay. And I used to make videos on sneakers. I used to do mostly sneaker unboxings and I will unbox limited edition items and games, things of that nature, like tech and stuff. And I was doing real good. I made a mistake. I got suspended for two weeks. 
and I ended up making another channel out of desperation, like, oh, I need my channel back. It never took off. And I just said, you know what? Forget everything. I'm done. And from that, I went to tra NFL trash talking, which it was a small community. It was never a big community. So that was like kind of a waste of time. So when I started this gaming channel, it's like I came with a low, a low quality product because I figured just turn up, put on the camera and talk. Yeah. And it, it takes it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than just putting up a camera and talking. I mean, it was a point where when I made videos, I was like this. You know, I was literally like this talking like you don't make a video like that. You don't you just don't do that. Yeah. So I, I can say that I'm a person that gives a high quality product by what people say and it's just it's just a matter of getting recognized i mean i'm i'm just one i'm just one plug away from being on top of this platform you know and, and so is most people so are most people um and that's just what it is but it's been a fun journey i've made a lot of friends like real life friends not youtube friends like real friends yeah met them on youtube but they became friends not youtube friends you, to, for me, YouTube friends are acquaintances, friends yeah. of friends, people like you. I got your phone number. Yeah. I can hit you up personally. You know, we talk privately all, off of this. And so many people like the the Mega Powers and J-Love and Sean of the Baddest Dudes. So many people, so many people. Phil Twerp. I mean, I could go on for days. How many friends I made, Chips and Sticks, great people. And it, it all started with this platform. So it's brought me on a journey of life. Maybe the content creating won't be for me as far as a career, but having fun is there. Beating games is there. And building community and making new friends relationships, it's there. Yeah, that's, and the, that, that's awesome. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. So we're going to be diving more into that, but like, I get what you're saying right there when you talk about YouTube friends. Because a lot of people see, see me and you talking, and they're like, oh, that's just your YouTube friend and all of that. But they don't realize that, 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 that some of us out there... No offense to anybody out there, but there's somebody out there that look at us, oh, you're just YouTube friends, all you do is play video games together, whenever, we're people that can put the video games down, we can put the YouTube down, and we can sit there and say, how's your mom, how's your dad, how's your kid, how's personal work going, you know, talk about sports and football, stuff that we don't even associate with our YouTube channel, we may mention it on YouTube, but we don't associate it with our YouTube channel. And we can sit there and talk about this. And we can talk about, hey, if we meet each other, it's not just going to be about video games, but let's go hang out and do all these different things. And throughout Get that... Some yeah. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And it's like that. And a lot of people can't get, get seem to know, you know, can't get through that. They see, oh, well, we're YouTube friends. Oh, well, we're good friends and all that. And they look at the numbers and they're like, and it's all a numbers thing. And it's like, the numbers thing is the last thing on my mind when I talk to the T-Billy, when I'm talking to... Avidon Smith, Chips and Sticks. I'm talking to, to to the guys that are part of Pixel Game Squad. I, the last murder numbers are the last thing on my mind. You know, it's like yeah, it's yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's French and shout shout to all. You just named a bunch of all freaking Pixel Game Squad, Riff Gabo, Ricky, all of them, Avidon, Chips. I mean, everybody. You, you named a bunch of awesome people, and it's there's so many more. It, it's it's like. It's a never ending. It's a never ending trend of finding somebody new, and they're awesome. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, that's the thing. So you never, never know who you're gonna meet every day when you hit that live button or you do that video. You don't know who you're gonna meet. Who's gonna become friends? And then the sad thing about it is, also sometimes you meet some people. They're cool, and then they come uncool. You know, and it's just how how life goes. It's like it's like it's no offense, but YouTube. The greatest thing I can say is it's like it's like it's not like any other thing other than like high school. You know, you've got your little, you, you know, they look at, you go into YouTube and people look like, oh, well, that person's a senior. Well, they're the higher class, you know, because, you know, it's like sub count. They look at them as bigger, you know. But then I'm like the freshman. I'm like, hey, I make dope videos. And there's somebody out there that looks at you like Destiny Phone. It's like, that person's dope. That person's good. They're, they're on my level. They might not have the numbers, but they're on my level. And then they were personal friends and people don't credit that. And it kind of is a little bit bullshit. You know, don't you agree? Yeah, oh yeah, I, I definitely agree. I when I first came to the platform, the rules were set in stone. When you're a small YouTuber, bigger YouTubers are not your friends. They don't like you. Leave them alone, right? Yeah. But then I met somebody like Petty Gang Gaming has a plaque. Destiny FOMO has a plaque. Yeah. And they're friends of mine just like you are, mm -hmm. just like a Jayla 81 is. You know, they're friends. 
And it's not about the number. It's about the people being cool. And that's a misconception that we get sometimes because so many YouTubers are so Hollywood. It's like some of them, you don't even have a plaque in their Hollywood. Like they got like 50K and they think, oh, I'm above you. I can't, I can't associate. You don't have a plaque. So you're nobody to you get that. To, not really. Once you get 10K, you're somebody. But you know what I yeah. mean? Like I, I have two friends that have plaques and it's like, that's an afterthought. That the, the 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 content is an afterthought. We met through the content, but as people, we're friends, and mm -hmm. we could be friends. But there's others that, Just, oh, I'm I'm here. I have a plaque. I can't talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the thing. The thing that's kind of I don't like. And there's even people that don't have a plaque. And they just, and they get to a certain number. It's like you talked about in the older days, how you could be at a lower number of subscribers, but if you consistently put out content, you can make a, make, make revenue, like $200 for 200, 200 subscribers. Nowadays, people look at you and they're like, like, if you're not at 1K and you're not monetized, oh, you're nothing to me, you know? And it's like, you're like, okay, you're monetized because what? You do low quality content and, 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 and you live stream all the time. So basically, you're live streaming all the time while I'm out working, and then I live stream when I can in the afternoons and at night. So you're yeah because you got those views and that number because you're live all the time. I can't be your friend, and you can't associate with me because I'm not at one k. And it's just all this stuff that these people get into it. It's just annoying. And I know you've mentioned it on your channel before, but I just wanted to mention it here for a second because me and you have had many many people. We're not going to get into it really deep, but me and him have had many, many talks about that because it's just the way people perceive things is sometimes it's clouded and it's like, hey, hey, can you wipe your glasses off? Hey, can you get out of the clouds and smoke and mirrors and really, 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 really see things? Because when you really look at apples to oranges, some of the best content creators don't even make a cent on YouTube and they're out there putting out dope content. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you want to say biggest... anything on that. The biggest misconception on YouTube, the biggest misconception is I can't wait to get monetized so I can make money. You ain't making no money. They, they pay cents. I, I, I can pull up an actual number. I'm pull up a number right now. I'm pull up a number right now. Fresh, brand new number. Fresh number. Okay, uploads. Um, hmm. How can I find something? Sort by most viewed. Okay. I have a video right here. Uh, it has 14,000 views. Yeah. 14,000 views, right? Mm -hmm. One this video. Okay, the last 28 days, I got 222 views. The last 28 days. This is a video that has 14,000 views, so it's in rotation. I made a whopping 54 cents. Yeah, and, and the thing about it is, on top of that, People think, oh, I'm monetized. Oh, I can hit that little button and make members, and I get 10, 15 members. I made 10. Oh, oh, oh I got $2 per member, right? 2 times 15 is 30. I made $30. No, no, Google has that little little thing thing where you got to make a certain amount of money before they ever send you a check. And they don't, people don't know that. Yeah, yeah. You need to make, you need them hit 100 bucks. So it's not a lot of money. So when people say, oh, yeah, I you did all that work for 100 bucks. Yeah. Have fun. Make content for fun. When you grow, when you get to that level, then you worry about the business because it it's, it could be misconceiving. But there is there is situations where some people don't have many, but they got a lot of members. They get a lot of donations. Things happen. Sponsorship deal. Anything can happen. But make your content the best it can be. Make your content grow, and then you know once you can do that, the money's gonna come in. But uh. Yeah. It's a big misconception. Monetization, I'm rich. Yeah. No, you're not. But I just 54 to, cents. Yeah, but I just wanted yeah. to mention that in addition to the consoles, the games, and all that, and going into YouTube things, just kind of let y'all know a little bit about me and him, you know, kind of some of the little conversations we have, because as a content creator, you would like to know, know if you're ever wanting to see this video, and you're like, hey, I want to go out there and create content, or hey, hey, I'm a friend of this, well, this maybe, maybe I want to be on here, or whatever you're, you're thinking when you see this. I wanted y'all to be able to know, 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 Hey, here's a little bit of a look from what T-Belly's seen from growing on the platform, creating some friends, you know, even knowing people that have plaques and they're just like personal everyday friends like Destiny FOMO, Thelma FOMO, they're personal everyday friends. They, they'll go hang out, but is it about the content? No, and that's something that I love about YouTube that you can make those kind of friends, you know, it's like there's a guy that he does, he, does he, 
He's on YouTube, but it's really not about. He doesn't really make content on YouTube because he has a, a video game store and all that. But Austin of Southeast Game Exchange and of the Video Game Corner in Corinth, Mississippi, me and him are personal friends and have met each other and all that. And that's something that this plat. If I didn't have this platform, that would have never happened. But because of this platform, because of people like T Belly, Dollar, J Love, they, they 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 said, hey, he's in your area. Go go meet him. And I went and met the guy and got to got to hang out. Then you buy something from his store? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my PS2 sitting right down there. I'm not going to unplug it or anything like that, but it's sitting right there. It was on my consoles and everything. Yeah, I got it from his store. And he hooked me up also at the same time with the um, the um, Hyperkin cord that goes to, to modern television to make it work. Wow. So that's really, really awesome that you can meet people like that. And yeah... You know, Yo, shout out to Austin Gaming ain't easy. Great dude right there. Great dude. And and definitely, definitely. Speaking of Austin, if we want to for a minute. How what was your experience and how you feel about about because you're about to go to another convention with too many games. How how is it that you you know you not only meet these people in like Destiny FOMO and Chips and Sticks and even met J Love and they've come to New York and y'all all hung out, but how is it whenever you go to things like conventions and meeting people there and getting to hang out with them? How's that experience for you as a YouTuber or just as a person? Well, I've only been to two conventions, and <laughs> yeah, but I let's just say it's a uh, it's quite the experience because you start seeing everybody. Yeah, you make content with, you start getting uh -oh. in just a convention. You know, it becomes something that's like a party. <laughs> you know, like every everywhere you look, you see oh, there goes the guys that make guys name my bad for the retro guys that make music i forgot their name but i dare they go there goes um linda gamer girl yeah. even though she was hanging with us there goes chris from central pain central pennsylvania reviews you know there goes nexus uh there goes jordan fringe and shady j behind the table where you could just say hi and it's just it's just awesome mike mattain's walking the floor with Aaron plays shopping for games uh super jeff good gamers buying every game that he sees possible you know <laughs> it, it's it's uh it's an experience man it's so many people regular people the cosplaying there was a girl dressed like uh what's her name uh bowsette bowsette there was a girl dressed like bowsette and when i tell you every guy wanted we were like holy smokes this girl can i mean even one of my boys i ain't gonna say that name, but uh even one of my boys like yo t look at that i'm like I give him the look like, yeah. And I'm telling you, man, it's, it's awesome. Hey, there was even a dude he said would dress like Kirby or something. Oh, I'll bring up Kirby in a minute. I'll bring up Kirby in a minute. We'll bring his ass up. <laughs> and we're gonna bring I didn't him put up that out. Motherfucking Kirby. I'm oh, sorry for cursing. <laughs> Wait, I'll bring Kirby up in a minute. So, before the pandemic. So, too many games. And even the hotel parties, we were like, screw the, uh, the, what is it, Media Wave, Spawn Wave Media Party. Screw their party. Shout yeah. out to John from Spawn Wave. Really yeah. Met him. And we had our own hotel party, and we, we just had a blast drinking, playing games. The time of your life, man. Things you can't do normally at home because we have responsibilities. We got things to do at home. So it's just a, it's just a great place to just shoot the shits with your peers. And, um... It, to sum it up, there was this, you know, you go there and just do what you want to do. Have fun. Because there's yeah. this guy dressed like her. The chunky guy with a pink, pink wig, yeah. a tight ass pink shirt, no shoes on, walking around barefooted. And this was him. It's like the whole time we're like, dude. And let me tell you, that guy had the time of his life. He had the time of his life. He's there messing around. He's there bothering people. He's trolling. He's just trolling, rolling. Freaking Russ Lyman got his 8-bit NES. Shout out to Russ Lyman. Uh, congrats, just married. Just tied yeah. the knot. He's yeah. on his mm -hmm. Shout out to Russ. And <laughs> Russ Lyman's an 8-bit. He's an 8-bit Jason. So he's like, oh, let's take a picture together. And then here comes Kirby. Hey, what about me? Russ is like, come on. I look at Russ. <laughs> and Russ, Russ takes the knife and puts the knife right by his neck. And... But... That was Saturday, but by Sunday night, Kirby was a friend. He was funny, and he had the time of his life. And I think that pretty much sums up when you go to a convention. You can do what you want to do and just have a good time around people that like the same thing that you like. Yes. And 
there's no rules. Just just be a Kirby. If you want to be Kirby for three days, be Kirby. You know? Yeah, and that's something that I really wanted to experience. And like whatever, like I've told my story many times. I would, I just messed around on YouTube for for three, four, five years, and then I did a gaming group that went to hell. And then I had talks with my my mom and all that, and I just refocused everything and said, hey, this, I love doing this. I love sharing my music, my wrestling, and gaming on on YouTube. And I went focused on this. And by the time I was getting ready to go to conventions, what happens? Pandemic hits. Cause me and my buddy Big Evil Gaming Logan. We were saving money. Back over to we're oh, we're gonna go to too many games. Oh, we're gonna go to two conventions in one year, and then do it the next year, and then pandemic hits and everything like that. And it screws everything up, you know. It, it was bad. I had a great lineup set. I had a great lineup ready, and it messed everything up, dudes. I had a red carpet waiting for me at O'Hara Airport, Illinois. I walk off that damn plane. I had a red carpet waiting for me. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like it's like the pre or previous Gone. to the pandemic. I had met Austin, and Austin's like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna have you set up at the convention, do all these different things, and everything like that. I might even get you, you try to work you a panel." And I'm just like, and I'm like, "Oh, like I've never done that before." He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like go there. I'll, I'll walk you around. I'll show you things. And I'm just like, okay, this guy's being nice to me, you know. And I'm nervous anyway, thinking about that. So I'm telling him, Logan, hey, we're gonna go do these things, you you know, and all this. I'm like telling T Belly, J Love, they're all hyped to meet me, and then this whole pandemic hits, and like we didn't have conventions for basically a year. But this summer, conventions started to open back up and everything like that. And officially, the big one, the big one for basically a lot of YouTubers, is too many games. But, you know, they have more of the higher prices compared to the other conventions when you want to go there and collect stuff, because they have some bigger names like Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, and a bunch of other Mar. Uh, characters and a bunch of big YouTubers like Big Boogie mm -hmm. goes there. The whole if you ever watch Spawn Wave, all those guys, OJ, RG Chase, Shots, Rodney, Shots of Spawn you know, Wave, Miss Click, all of them will be there this year. You know they're going to be doing I think a live version of the podcast or something like that, trying to do that there and all these different things. So are you hyped to go back to another convention? Well, I'm mad. I miss my favorite convention, Southeast Game Exchange. Definitely a place you want to visit. Yeah. It's a smaller convention, but it's ran by Gaming Ain't Easy, Austin, and he does a phenomenal job. He makes it as comfortable as possible for YouTubers, and it's just the prices are great. The atmosphere is usually great, and this is where you get a bond. You know, my first time, I was about 65%, 70% of myself. I was really tired. Uh, wow. we, unfortunately, we had a bad road trip, 18-hour road trip. was not supposed to be that long, and it messed everything. My experience was not full tea belly, but still with that, I still loved it. I got my power glove there and it's nice. a place that, um, I gotta say, I can't wait to go back and I missed it this year, yeah. but that's a convention. I definitely suggest starting there. It's a great place to go and it sets you up for other conventions, but I think it's the best convention personally. I think it's the best one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so. So what do you, so so if that's the best one, like if you want to have a good starter convention, a good thing to go, one that's more kind of like home, like hanging out with your friends and all that. Because if you go, if, if you talk about like too many games, which I know you've been to it and you've had that experience and all of that, which I want to hear your little share it with everybody, just a little portion of it. That one is like it's like going from like it's like going from playing, I guess <laughs> like say your Nintendo as is, is like South Korea. That's for everybody. Nintendo, oh that's for everybody. But then you go to too many games, and yeah, that's they still they have their Nintendo part, which is for everybody. But then they also have their people that are like, if you look at YouTube, like their PlayStation and their Xbox series, we're like, we're better than this and this. And you got those different, and you meet so many different people there because like the, that's the big names, you know. It's like you go to the convention, you want to have one. It's like at like your home, like you're like your hometown. Go to go to Southeast Game Change. I've seen that one. Like like I've had personal conversations with people like NES. I've talked to NES. Um, Attic and in in the end, I forgot the other one's name. NES um, Complex. Shout out to and it's complex and it's out of J and it's complex. Yeah. Good dude yeah. right there. Good dude yeah. right there. I've had through live streams, I've had conversations with him and they said cool, which which I gotta say, NES attic, one of the coolest closets I've ever seen in gaming. That closet up there in the little attic area, that is I'm, awesome. I've I've been in there. What? I was in there. Yeah, I was in there when I was at Southeast Game Exchange. Uh Mega Dan twenty nine and Shady J of the Game Chaser decided to have a contest in Contra. Yeah. I guess Shady J didn't know who found out with mm -hmm. Mega Dan. Yeah. And I was just hanging out there and we, you know, they were talking. I was, I was part. Yeah. It was, I was just watching them. So we had a night. Mm -hmm. 
I I just wanted to see I just wanted to see them play some games. You know, I was just excited to be there with Shady J because everybody else that was there, I know them already. I met them. It's like, okay, I already met you guys, but Shady J to see him away from like a panel and see him shooting the shits. I I wanted to hang right there. If there was more space, I would have sat right next to him, but there was not space. So I was standing behind the wall to the side. Yeah. And they were just talking. We were all just talking. BP Retro Power was there recording a lot. And we are just hanging out. And Mega Dan and Shady J taught me one of my most lethal Mike Tyson punch out tricks. He taught me a way to fight Mike Tyson in the second round where I can get stars consecutively. He right there. I was taught live. Hey, T, do this. And you're going to fuck him up every time. Sorry I for the cursing. That. I remember oh. that. Cause you, cause I remember after you learned that you came home and like I think it was in a month or two you streamed the game and you said this is where I learned it and you showed show people on stream how, how how to get better at it you know and, yeah and yeah that, shout to Shady J for that you know and that's one of the cool things is that I'm gonna get into like a too many game thing but when, he, when he's speaking of that one thing right there that uh, punch up that's one of if you want to talk about that one of the most high profile retro games that he streamed he has streamed that game and he has streamed it. Several different ways as well, showing it on the NES online and the retro consoles and all that. And it's cool that he shows you how it is on a modern television, but also on a retro CRT. And he said, and, and I'll, he'll probably agree with you, CRT is the way to play Punch Out. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. It's, it's the only way, but you can do it other ways, but it's the key way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so speaking on the, the, that convention, now moving over to Too Many Games, how was your experience and all that, and how hyped are you to go back to Too Many Games again? Well, I'm a little saddened because I don't know if I'm going yet till ah. I find out tomorrow. Oh, so, man. but if if I'm if I got the okay to go, I'm gonna be at a ten because this is the only con this is the only convention I'm going to this year, and it's the last convention I'm going to until I buy this card I'm saving up for a certain car I want to get. So until I get that car, I'm not going on no vacations and no conventions, with the exception of Disney World with my son next year. With the exception of that, that doesn't count because it's a family thing. Um, Understandable. I this is the, my only convention, so if I don't make it, I'm gonna be really sad. But if if I got the okay, I'm really excited. I just wanna, I just wanna fucking walk in that hotel room with two shots of Jack in my body and just say we here and we live, baby, and just see all those people there in that room, everybody cheering, drinking, having fun, playing games. I'll probably take my shirt off. I mean, it's going to get crazy. Yeah. And that's what I want. A part of his YouTube journey, one of my favorite parts is I wasn't there, but he, but, but, but they were gracious enough to turn the camera on on the phone, go live. And this is something that, 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 that if you go search, you might be able to find it. But they went live and they showed people like, like Megadam and all them bringing old school CRTs to too many games in the hotel room, setting them up. Having some drinks, some pizza, some food, and just sitting there shooting the shit and just playing games. And it was like, and then, and then they had the camera going on there, man. It was so awesome. That was an experience that was like, I knew that when I saw that, those were people that I wanted to have friends not only for the rest of my life, but I had to go to these conventions and meet these people and have a drink with them, have some fun, you know. And that's the kind of thing that you want to, because cause you know what, when you were in that thing, yeah, games and yeah, content brought them together. But did they think about that? No, that was the last thing on their mind. They were sitting there shooting the shit, having fun. Having fun, man. Like Captain Algebra, uh, seeing Captain like away from the camera and behind the scenes, and it's like wow, like Captain's so much fun. He's such a fun guy to. Be. And I haven't seen him since. So it's like, man, I want to see Captain Algebra. Yeah, that, that, that's. I haven't a, seen him since. Yeah, that's you know? the thing. Is like, it's like, it's like you talk about. I talk about me not being able to convince because the pandemic. Well, he just went to his convention, and then the pandemic hit, and it's just like like this whole crazy world of things happening, happening that that, that 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 we've all gone through personally and professionally. But one thing that I can say before I get into him letting him ask me some questions and some other things for the next little yeah. bit is that oh, yeah. is that even though this pandemic hit, even though all these crazy things happened, I'm glad that stuff like YouTube, Discord, all these different gaming platforms that have let us connect. Are still there because we've gone through all this stuff in the last year, but we've been able to still have this content, have these games to connect with each other and stay on par. As how are you doing mentally with all this going on? How are you doing physically and all of this? And I gotta say, I am proud to call him not just a friend but a brother. You know, and yeah, we haven't met yet, people, but we're gonna meet one day. 
And like and like I like we've always said it many times, he's gonna take me to New York, he's gonna show me around, we're gonna have we're gonna have a shot of Jack or Crown together and we're gonna have some fun. Just letting y'all know. So if y'all see anything crazy when we ever meet in the next couple of years, it's gonna be wild. It's gonna go down. Yo, Chris just needs his plane ticket. He doesn't need anything else. He already knows that. And uh just just I just wanna put one thing in with this pandemic. Chris Levi was one of those people that helped me get through the pandemic. A lot of people were working from home. No matter what you say, you were working from home in the safety of your home. A lot of people were on unemployment. You're in the safety of home with income coming in. But people like me, people like Chris Levi 13, Chayla 81, and Do You Nerd, these were those were the four people that gave me the most motivation every day to stay focused, to not give up and don't worry. I'm not alone because they were essential workers as well. And those were the those were the four people that helped me get through this because without them, I don't know where I would be. I don't know what would have happened. It was it was scary times, guys. Remember when this when this thing first happened, people were dropping like flies. We didn't know what was gonna happen. We didn't yeah, know nothing. Uh, I don't want to you know? sit there harp on it. You know? But you know, I had it hard being being being, being who I am, right? Working, working in, and and get working with people every day. Because I work in the basically the grocery industry. I'll say that. I'm not gonna say where I work. Work. But but what's even what's difficult to me is that I had to be be there for for that guy right there. Because not only is he going through a pandemic, but you remember what happened in the summer of the pandemic. He lives in New York. That was like centralized, focused on by all the media, the news, everything going down. So he needed people to be there for him. He needed friends because. What I went through was nothing compared to what he was going through. It was rough. It was rough out here, man. But I'll say this. You know, we got through it, man. We here. It's yep. 2021, yep. about to be yep. October. Yep. We're and here, man. I, yep. And as we're starting to slowly come out of the pandemic, sometimes we're going, they put these things back and they kind of lift and then put it down. And it's, you don't know what's going to be day to day. I will say what happened last year in 2020, person of the pandemic, us growing and getting grocery bonds, let me know that once we come out of it, a little bit here sometimes things things get knocked back a step or two and they say oh well you got to have this mandate and this and all these different things they change day by day because even our own government doesn't know what's going on sometimes i gotta say yeah. what our friendships and our bonds we made there made me know that 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 that, that like i said before the people that i've met through content through all this are people that, that whenever say tomorrow i had to put content up i'd stop doing this podcast i stopped doing all this that those are people that i still i want to be able to look at my phone my consoles and be able to connect and game with these people. Oh yeah. Now it's your turn. Throw the questions my throw throw a couple questions my way and then we'll get into some other stuff. But throw some questions my way, man. I I I, I was pulling this up on my phone. I have three questions for you. Okay. But before I, I have a bonus question. Yeah, this yeah, just ask popped me in my head. You want. What's I mean excitement level one to ten. Wolverine Insomniac Games. Excitement level for you. Wolverine. That character I've loved since I was a little kid through seeing him on TV. Then I play games called X-Men Legends 1 and 2. And he's basically, in my character, he's one of the characters you start with in X-Men Legends. And he's basically the one that I kind of made as the leader of the team next to Iceman and stuff like that in Storm. And he's and it made me fall in love. And I see Gene Hugh Jackman play him in a character all the way from the first one. To, to Logan, and that basically made his career. It made him do a bunch of other stuff because he almost didn't get the role. And I fall in love with that character so much, it makes me go search out to the comics and all that. I have one of the comics in a box over there, the one called that's, that's about the depth of Wolverine, and I just love that character so much. So to see Insomniac, that developer, who already makes one of my top five franchises, Ratchet and Clank, and they've been on that franchise, and they're the one... Franchise from the PS2 that was a 3D platform, they didn't just drop it and go to something else. No offense to, to Gorilla or what you know, or Naughty Dog or any of the other ones that made the other franchises, you know. They they kept making one for, for the PlayStation. And I see that how quality those games are, and then I'm like, then they do Spider Man, and they throw left field at you with Spider Man 2018. And I haven't played it yet, but I've seen so many streams of it. That game's off, and they do Miles Morales and show, hey, we can show a game that can start the PS5 generation and show you what a PS5 could do. And then they do Ratchet and Clank, rip the part. I'm just like, when they get the, when I see that logo pop up in the present, presentation a couple weeks ago for Wolverine, my mouth drops because I'm like, they already, they do the most quality games, the most consistency of having games every year or two years since they started. And I'm just like, what they could possibly do because 
the scene that they show where it's reminiscent of when you first saw him in the original X Men movie, when he's sitting there, yeah. sitting there, and Rogue comes walking in, sits at the bar to ask who he kind of looks over at him. They see the stuff on TV, and then the, and then people start trying to jack with him, and then he has to leave the place. And I'm just like, oh my goodness! So knowing that that developer is one of the most quality developers in the industry, I'd probably put them in like in the top five of developers. And personally, for me, they're in my top five of favorite developers. I gotta say, them getting Wolverine is phenomenal, and I can't wait to see what the product is when it releases probably in 2023 or 2024. Before I ask you the next question, uh, shout to Insomniac Games. They gave us Miles Morales in November, and they gave us Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart in June. Yes. That is savage. That was savage shit right there. Savage mode yeah, all the way. Yeah. And on top of that, when they gave you Miles Morales, they gave you, even though people got the controversy with the way the face went, they did give you a remastered version of the 2018 yeah. Spider-Man to yeah. go alongside it to sit there and say, hey, we can also show you how to remaster a game, basically. And it showed everybody, like, all these remasters, here's ours, and ours is better. You may, you're making me want to play it now, man. Because <laughs> they, they did a great, it just performs better, but I'm not going to get into all that right now. Uh, so my first question of my three... What, well, second question, since I asked you one already. What franchise you started playing late that impressed you a lot? Hmm. I, so something that's been out, but you started playing it later in its life, the franchise, and it impressed you a lot. Well, so like I said, 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 said I've been playing games since the Super since the Super Mario World. That's the first game I remember playing, but really the first console we had that I remember me and my brother having because we had a Super Nintendo in the house. But then we gave that to a relative when we got the PlayStation 1. And obviously at Christmas, me and my brother got it. One of us got the console, one of us got the uh, memory card and the controller. So we so and our parents said, that's the reason we're getting it to you that way is because y'all got to share that console. And I remember playing games and all, and all that. But later in life, this we talked about this franchise earlier. And I've played them a little bit on stream, mostly off stream. It's Castlevania. And I got to say, it impressed me because like I really wasn't into like, oh, I'm not into those kind of games. I'm more... Of a platformer guy, my Ratchet and Clank, my Jack and Dexter, my Sly Cooper, my Banjo Kazooie, you know, stuff like that, or my Halos, and my my or my looter shooters, you know, in in Borderlands. So when I played Castlevania, it was it made me want to go play 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 um a Ghost and Goblins or other game or Contra and all that because Castlevania was just like you go into it, you drop in, you got your side scroller scroller. Even though I got my Tarot Grass 16 and I got the game that's, I forgot the name of the game that's on there that kicked my butt on stream that everybody saw kept Rondo, kicking my butt. Rondo Blood. Rondo Blood. <laughs> yeah, Rondo One of my Blood. Favorites. I kept my butt kicked multiple times on that one. I got the Castlevania collection, not this one, but the one that came out a couple years ago. And I just love it, you know, in this cast and you just look at these games and even I went back and played the uh Sith uh the one that was on the PS1, Castlevania Symphony of uh, Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night. Night. And that, that was that was awesome, you know, and, and speak having friends with people like Rax the Great who really is into the series, people like him seeing Mega Dan and other people play play these Castlevania games, it's gave me appreciation for a series that maybe I didn't grow up with, but I enjoy it may you know, for what they, they they get out of it, but also I get something out of it now playing these games and it gives me more of a respect for not only Castlevania, but at retro gaming as a whole, whether it be Baddest Dudes, Battle Toads it be an old Mario game or Kirby game and all that. And people say, that's crazy. How could one franchise do that? But it's because of how good Castlevania games are. Castlevania could do it to you. I'm a late Castlevania bloomer myself. I started playing Castlevania in December of, wait, 2019, right? Yeah, December 2018, the first time I played Castlevania 1. Yeah. So I'm, I was a late bloomer to Castlevania. And it's already in my top five. It's, it's a great series, man. Yeah, I mean that's a, I mean that's one of those tried and true series, 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 series that even though they haven't had a had a current game in a long time for that game, there all these remasters it's selling just as good as as a new game coming out, and that's phenomenal for a franchise like that. All right, so uh, next question. All right, I'm gonna answer this question for myself because okay. uh, uh, th this is one that you might like. So, what franchise are you most looking forward to trying? Now, I'm going to give you my answer. So basically, a franchise you never played before, but you're looking forward to trying it. For me, it's actually one of your favorites, Kingdom oh, Hearts. No, no. Kingdom Hearts. I can't wait to try it. I have 
the whole collection. I literally have every game. I've had the full story so far. And I do Studio Nintendo, I won a giveaway for Kingdom Hearts 3 Digital. So I have the whole collection. I'm really looking forward to trying that franchise. So what's a franchise you never played, but you're looking forward to trying? That's the great. The thing about it is, is that that's kind of a hard question to answer. I'm trying to think about one of them, but it's like I've never really put put a good any time into any Kirby game. I have like the one they have on the NES online or whatever the Super NES online, the ones they have on Nintendo Switch, right? And I've seen yeah. Kirby Star Allies, and I've almost and I almost bought that game, but I've never Not tried bad. to try to cur- Kirby. I've never really put more than maybe ten minutes into mm-hmm. any Kirby game in my entire life, so. I guess you could say Kirby, and Kirby, oh, Kirby and it be, and I have to say two games, Kirby and or other than um, uh, um, Yoshi's Island, which was on the, one of the Game Boys, you know that it had to be the Yoshi series because I never played uh, um, Craft World or Woolly World with Yoshi. And those games look really, really amazing for what they do, even though they're not the big full out game that people would want, like a, like what they do with Mario or Zelda. That's really, really, you know, and this new Kirby game is something that makes me look at it and, and because it does exactly what I would want with Kirby. It goes into all the platform aspects that I get get and love out of my Ratchet and Clank or my Mario and all that. And it's going into that and it's like I'm ready to sink my teeth into that game and it's just we just got one trailer. Nice, nice. Sounds good. And uh, just a heads up, you got access to right on the Switch, you have access to Kirby's Adventure on the NES. And on the SNES, you have Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. So right there, you have the beginning games for both. You know, yeah. technically not really for Kirby. That's his second game. But basically, that's his first any home console game. So, yeah, I mean, right there, you could try them out. And they, they look beautiful. Both yeah. games, both series look beautiful. So uh, the last question I have for you is, um, unless you want more later, you, uh, of these questions, questions I wrote right. down. All right, so... If you can only have one current console, what would it be? So it can only be a PS5, an Xbox Series, a Nintendo Switch, or PC gaming. If you can only have one to play games on, okay. which console would it be? I only don't, one. So I, it looks like you're like tying my hands. I put my hand back. It's like tying my hands saying, hey, I can only play one. You know, and it's like, oh, because, you know, when I sit there and think about it, you go to PlayStation, everybody plays PlayStation. You know, especially when it comes to content, everybody plays PlayStation. Xbox, it's got my Forza, it's got my Halo. You go to Switch, and there's games for everybody there. It's got Pokemon, it's got your Mario, it's got your Zeldas, it's got games that give you countless hours of playability. And and then you got PC gaming, which can basically do everything your Xbox does. You know, you know, but also now it's able to do some of the PlayStation stuff, stuff, and you know, and all that. It's like plus it's got its own games that are only there, so it's. Really a hard question because I currently don't have a PS5 so or an Xbox Series, which I would love to have one, but this whole pandemic, this whole way the world goes, personal things that if you've been around the channel, you know what's happened personally. It's kind of keeping me from getting those things. When I was so close to getting an Xbox, that close, I was literally looking for one, and then the stuff happened earlier this year. you know. But if I had to really think about it, short term, long term, I might have to say Xbox Series. And the reason I'd have to say Xbox Series X is because you can buy a game physical. As my buddy Austin would say, you can buy the game physical, put it in there, play it. But also it has repay, resale value because it's a physical game. Then you go on and play the game. And it started with Rare Replay because I feel like Rare Replay was their, was their footing into, hey, let's see if how this stuff works. And then you can play games on your Xbox, from your original Xbox and Xbox 360 if you got the physical disc and or download them off of their store page. Then you're being able to play the new games. Their hardware is just as strong, if not just a hair better, than what you get with the PlayStation. Yeah, they don't have the fancy controller that PlayStation or the Switch has, but they give you the the, the, the best top-of-line graphics. They give you all these different franchises. They got so many studios they bought. And people are griping that they ain't no games are coming out. Well, games don't happen in two, two, three, four years, especially the games that Xbox wants to do, the mature games. So I feel like if I can get my Halo, my Forza, I can get my platformers by playing some, you know, some of the older stuff, Banjo. I can play Crash on there now because Crash went third party, Spyro went third party. I'd have to go, games. At, you know, yeah, I'd have to go Xbox Series, you know, because because mm. it get, it gives you a little bit of everything. That's that's nice. Uh, so I'm not gonna make this too long. Uh, 
my choice would be P PlayStation 5, okay. but the Xbox Series X, that's the best answer. Because out the box, all you have to do is sign up for a developer's account, pay 20 to get a developer. You can jailbreak your Xbox. So your Xbox Series X out the box plays original Xbox games. Not all, but a lot. 360, yeah. Xbox One, Xbox Series, right? You got all four generations of Xbox. Now, for the games that don't run on the console, you get that developer's account and you put a Xbox emulator. You have the whole Xbox library. You, you have the whole Nintendo library up to the GameCube. You have the whole PlayStation library up to... And you have Arcade ROM, main, main, Neo Geo. So the Xbox is actually a wise choice because it can that do it all. That is true because if you were with, speaking of when we talked about conventions, we talked about Spodcast. There's a guy on there that's a developer named Modern Inventions Gamer, and he has he doesn't have an X, he has an S, the same model that that T Belly has, and he Joe broke it and said, hey, I can play the current games on there, but I also if you go into developer mode, you can play other games on there, and he did it. He did it as being a developer and being somebody that works on stuff because like he's helped put put Quake onto the modern consoles. What's that mean? That's phenomenal. That like I say, I've spoken with somebody that's done that, you know, and yeah. everything like that. But to be able to do that because like I was hearing T Bay say that, and I'm like, there's that guy popped straight in my head. I'm like, he's done that and shown video of it, and I'm like, that is phenomenal. So you can do that on a console. It's not something you do and rec that you would sit there and say recommend everybody do. But if you know what you're doing and you don't mess your system up. That is right there. Like it's like having a retro pie in your hand, but saying, mm -hmm. "Hey, this retro pie can only do so much." But then you got this Xbox right here. That says, "Hey, this is a retro pie, but it's ten times better." Exactly. Exactly, man. That's awesome. But yeah, that was my last question for yeah, now. Yeah. So if you got any more questions, feel free to hit me up at any time. But yeah, it's been a fun, fun, fun conversation. Conversation, everybody. Definitely, you got to go check out T, -Be T Belly and all that. We're not getting out mm -hmm. here right now, but but definitely go check them out. For your retro games, like they're like you know, even some modern games. Like recently, he's been diving back into the 360 PlayStation 3 era with, with uh, Dead Space and having a phenomenal time doing that. And it's cool that he's going into Dead Space right going into that time of the year with Halloween and the spookiness coming in. And it's cool to see him experiencing this game. And I want to throw it out there: How is it with you when you go into these games on stream or even off stream? Some of the games because YouTube and friends have allowed you to do that going into some of these franchises for the first time how is it for you well it's great i love when people suggest these franchises because in that era the 360 ps3 Wii era yes. i wasn't gaming much i did not game much because of life i had to take life very serious i had my son real young so i wasn't a big gamer like i am now so a lot of those franchises i missed out on never played a mass effect game before Never played Doom. I played Doom for the first time this year. My first Doom game. I never played even Halo. My first Halo was on the Master Chief Collection. So there's so many things I missed out on that I, I played them like late. Even Gears of War. My first Gears of War was Ultimate Edition of Gears 1. That was the first time I played Gears of War. So it's like so many things. I ate Ratchet and Clank. My first Ratchet and Clank was in 2021. Like, it's, it's so many franchises I missed out on. So, like, something like Dead Space, it's just phenomenal. And being that we're getting a remake, I'm excited for the remake. And I got to experience a great game. And I'm not done yet. I got three more chapters to go. Next stream, I will beat it. But it's been great. And now you just opened my door to a new franchise. Now I want to go buy part two and part three. And and the Wii game, which is a, it's its own thing. To get the, Get three more dead space games and prepare for the big release of the remake and i love that about about now where you have community that they can teach you about games and show you about games love that yeah and and, and when the, the other beautiful thing about it is when you talk about community is i love whenever you go into these new games you meet so many people in the chat chat that are that are friends like you see people in the chat you've talking all the time but then you see like like you go into your chat and you see who's in, you see all these other people that know Dead Space and like have a love for this and you can kind of connect with these people at a level. And they don't, you know, and some of them will sit there and kind of give you like tips and tricks and different things or tell you a little lore about the series that maybe the game doesn't always tell you, but it's cool to kind of connect with these people on these things because it makes me, as a gamer, I know you probably feel the same way. Sometimes our friendship get closer because we're like, oh, I didn't know you were into that. Cool, awesome. Man, that's really cool, you yeah. know? 
No, I love that. Yeah, and that's dope right there. Even with wrestling. I just got into wrestling again. Yeah. AEW, you know? I just literally just got into it the most, what, three weeks ago? And now I'm a fan. I will say, 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 I'm a part of fault for that, people. I, mean, I was hyping it up so much. And I, me, and, me and my buddy Logan Big Game hyped that up so much. And so, and even his friend Destiny Fomo and everybody kept hyping that stuff so much. He's like, I got to go you try this out. And he saw saw that pay-per-view where CM Punk returned and all that. And, man, he loved it. So just for a second there, we're going to switch away from the YouTube games. Man, man, how does it feel getting back into watching wrestling again on a regular basis and seeing something that is just as good, if not comparable, if not better at times, to what the product that's been the mainstay for the last 20 years, been the only big kid in town, as they say, but also has been around for like 50 years, WWE, to see somebody come back in there and say, hey, we're not just going to be WCW, but we're going to be our own thing and be able to rival WWE. And you see all these different characters and things on there. How do you enjoy being back watching wrestling? This has been phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, I'm not going to make this too long, but I started back in WWF, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, Mr. Perfect. Oh, that's, the, golden. You know, that's golden there. That's I mean, early so, 90s. You know, Jake the Stick, so many more. Legion of Doom, so much greatness. And then it went on to the Bret the Hitman Hart era, which was a good era too. Bret Hart, Psycho Sid, then Undertaker was always around. Uh, Shawn Michaels, and then WCW came with not with uh, the NWO. They really changed the game. <laughs> the Monday Night Wars, and then all of a sudden WWF, good guy babyface to Stone Cold Steve Austin, just like I'm a bad guy and people cheer for me. <laughs> and we we went to the Attitude Era. It was great. WCW fell off. Then they bought WCW, and it just didn't interest me no more. I said I'm good. I did not watch the Ruthless Aggression era. I didn't, I wasn't into it. I didn't watch it at all. Even though a lot of my favorites went there, people like Eddie Guerrero, Ray Mysterio, Booker T made a name for themselves in the WWE. Amen. I didn't get to see that. Even JBL, I know him from the Acolytes, and he went on to be something special as a singles competitor. Yeah. I missed all of that. I didn't see none of that, but I got into TNA because I was kind of anti-WWE. I got into TNA for a little bit. Then they fell off. And then finally, I said, uh, in 2014, I said, let's watch WWE. So I'd never seen CM Punk wrestle. Never seen him wrestle until the other day. i never seen him wrestle in WWE, but I saw WWE for a few years from like 20, late 2014 to about 2018. And then I was just like, I'm done. And thankfully, AEW got me right back on track where I want to be. Excited and ready for the next episode. That is awesome. That is awesome, and and everything like that. That, that. that that a new company can come around and not just sit there and say we're an alternative, not just say we're a competitor, not just say, oh, we get a lot of these uh, ex WWE guys into our company because, no offense, he he he, he can probably agree with me. Is that a lot of things that that, that that AEW does? People always will sit there and they'll throw the little cheap line. It's like ECW. It's like WCW. They're just gonna get all the names and do all this thing. But what's happening in this world because pandemic was happening at the same time that there's companies coming around that that company not only was their main show but their other shows they allowed wrestlers and i'm gonna this is gonna be real short but they allowed wrestlers and people to be able to have somewhere to where hey i'm a i'm a young guy and i'm big on the independent scene but i don't have nowhere to wrestle well hey you can't be you might not be on our dynamite or our rampage but you can come be on our dark dark and get and get a match and if you do good enough in a couple of them, we might get you a spot on this this you know, and all this, and it's cool to see that. It's cool to see that they usher in a whole new wave of fans and get people back into loving wrestling. Because I love seeing people that like like love wrestling get back into it. You know, whether it's, whether it's AEW or even if it's WWE, because wrestling is one of those things that, that just like video games lights a fire in me, and it's just something cool that 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 that. that, 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 that has so many different meanings it can go into. Because, like, wrestling, you got wrestling itself that you watch, and you got the pay-per-view side of it, you got the merch side of it, you got the video games, which, obviously, knowing him, he knows all the classic. Like, it, we may have bashed on the N64 PS1 era, but that's some of the greatest games in wrestling there. That's the best wrestling <laughs> games in N64, man. If you don't like the the THQ Aki engine on N64, you must like the Ukes or Yuki's engine on PS1 and PS2. So one of the two is your favorite wrestling game yeah. of all time, and most likely. And what's crazy about that is it comes first circle 
the developers from that era of games, they didn't go with 2K and then all that. They're coming back and AEW is like, hey, we'll get y'all on the modern consoles and make a game for us. That's yep. crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. They're going to mix No Mercy with SmackDown. They're going to mix them into one. So everybody wins. Even though I'm not going to be, even though I want No Mercy purely, I'll accept the arcade style of SmackDown if I could get that mashup. It's fine with me. People yeah. still talk about Def Jam Fight for New York to this day. That's a game based off that engine. You know? <laughs> I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. They made, uh, after, uh, after N64, they made Def Jam Vendetta. Def Jam Fight for New York, and then they made Galactic Wrestling featuring uh, featuring Ultimate Muscle. They made three other wrestling games that played exactly the same, but arcade style. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So, man, we saw, spoke on a variety of things out, out, out here, you know, from his journey to this and that, you know, and it's giving you a little peek into more of who TB is. But one thing we have not speak about that he's mentioned from time to time 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 and i wanted to kind of get into this because like when i talk to other people i've gotten to like some of their anime side stuff like that that may not be their focus but i want to get into it he's also a big music head you know he loves his music especially being in new york if you're not in new york and you don't love the hip-hop or the rock or something that comes out of new york i don't know what to tell you you know you must must be slept on the wrong side of the bed you know yeah but share people a little bit of your love for music and some of your favorite artists you know just to give people a little bit more insight on you you if you would, would. All right, well, with music, I grew up uh, in a Spanish home, a Puerto Rican family. So they would listen to freestyle music and salsa music, salsa freestyle. That's what they listen to. <clears throat> you know, my, not at the Roxbury, that type of shit. What is love? That thing when you knock me. <laughs> That's yeah. the music they listen to. But I liked it, but I wasn't like into it until the Wu-Tang Clan. I heard the Wu-Tang Clan, and I was just this little kid with these big glasses and long hair, and I'm just like, this is nice. I like this. And I was uh, I was really, really wanting to listen to it. And uh, I got a copy tape. It was a tape. We used to use tapes. I got a copy tape of Enter the Wu-Tang, and I was the happiest little kid until my aunt had a boyfriend who she's married to today. He says, hey, I got a gift for you. He gave me Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style, his very first album. And I was just hooked. Wu Tang, Snoop Dogg, uh, Biggie Smalls, you know, the notorious big when he came out, you know, fat guy that I was a fat kid. So I was just like, mm -hmm. I'm a hip hop head, even to this day. My, I mean, we wear our hats low. This is hip hop style, you know. Ralph Lauren, that's hip hop. Shit. That comes from New York City. Yeah. That's a New York City thing, you know. We, we, we wear polo. We, we you know, we wear, we, we, we keep in style. We wear Air Jordans. That's New York shit, man. And, Hip hop started in this city, you know, and I, I love the genre. I love the genre. Today's hip hop is not too much my thing, but I listen to. But uh, my favorite artist is Nas. He's my favorite. Mm -hmm. I love the I love the Locks. Jada Kiss in the Locks. I love uh, Fifty Cent when he was out. Love uh, Biggie when he was out. Jay Z obviously he's from Tom Brooklyn. You know I love I love the good shit. I love the good shit pretty yeah. much. The good the lyrical the lyrical music. Not yeah. that, um, not really the the commercial Smith, not the Will Smith, yeah. the the Tupac Shakur music. You know, that's yeah. the rap that I like. Yeah. So speaking on music, did you ever catch the verses they had a few weeks ago with Fat Joe? Uh, I didn't see the whole thing. Um, the thing with verses, I've never seen a verses. Yeah, yeah. As I a hip hop know. fan, I've never watched one until I watched the Locks versus Dipset. I knew what was gonna happen. I, I mean, anybody that listens to their music should know what was going to happen. It was an annihilation, and it was so much fun. Yeah. I had a great time. Then yeah. Fat Joe comes yeah. to job. It's good, but it wasn't that good. It was like, okay, now we're back to song versus. Yeah. You know, but it's still good. Yeah, cause I just wanted to mention that for a second because cause, cause, cause you make the joke all the time that you look like Fat Joe, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, since I was a little kid, uh, people always called me Fat Joe. So Kid. Back when Fat Joe was even cool, Lee when he actually made like <laughs> raw hip hop and not the commercial hip hop, uh, before Big Pun, uh, I was still Fat Joe because there weren't many, you know, there weren't many Puerto Rican rappers. All the rappers were primarily African American. It was people like Fat Joe, Big Pun, Eminem that stood out more for the lighter shade of 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 artists, you know. Obviously Vanilla Ice, but he was a commercial. He wasn't like hip hop, hip hop. But Eminem, Fat Joe, Big Pun. These guys were hip hop, you know, 
and they would rap and it was um it was it was a different flavor because we're all one it's one culture you know and that's what i loved about because eminem yeah he's a caucasian white male but he's from the hood he's from his hood you know it's trailer park in detroit but he's from the hood he's from the grind just like every other mc you know he he did the same thing except he was white so some people are oh, he's a white boy but not nah, he's from the grind just like nah Eminem is from the grind, you know, and that that's that's one thing I love about Eminem. He's from the grind. He's not a he's not coming from some silver spoon suburbs and making good rap music. He came from the grind, and he yeah, yeah you know yeah yeah. Cause I totally get what you get get because me us being music heads outside of our game outside of that wrestling. I just want to touch on this being music. Heads, sometimes you know you get these things that are commercially made to sit there and say okay throw this into the rap scene throw this into the rock scene and you can tell that was commercially made to try to put it out there and he, and i just you can't get along with it you know but when you see people like eminem or like a fat joe joe come out there and, and they look different they talk different but they come out there and they do what they want to and they can make it successful and all that that is phenomenal because it gives people like us even though we may not do that music kind of thing, maybe we're, we're, we're doing YouTube, we're doing a gaming video, a gaming podcast, a gaming stream, or whatever we do in life. It gives us a little hope that maybe what we do can get out there, and we can be different and get out there and get our, get somebody to look at us, you know? Yeah, yeah. great, great analyzation right there, for sure. Yeah, Good man. Shit. Yeah, man. I like so, it. so speak, I want to speak for a second on the whole, whole, whole Nas thing. You know, you know, how is he out of all the artists that you listen to? probably thousands upon thousands. How is he the, your favorite? What made him connect with you? Well, he's, he's honestly, he's li literally the best. Lyrically, he's the best. He, he made a song. Here's an example of how good Nas is. Mm -hmm. um, the best, Jay-Z, the best, right? Who, I still say Jay-Z's the best rapper because the overall commercial success, yeah. a little mixture of both, but, but Nas is the best MC because his lyrics, and Tupac and Biggie died. They died. So they never got to hit that peak where Nas and Jay-Z kept going. And Nas is just lyrically gifted. He he raps and he can make a song where he paints a picture in your head. When he's rapping and you're listening, because you got to listen. It's not a rhyming words together. He's, he's speaking a story. And he spit a story about being a gun. He, 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 he said a song. He did a whole song. And the song is in the perspective of a gun. It's wow. literally a gun. He did a song where he spit a story backwards. He literally did a backwards story where somebody got shot. Basically, the story ended with somebody. It started with a guy getting a guy sitting in his house drinking liquor. That's where the story started. But he ended the song with that. And he started the song with somebody getting shot. That was the ending of the story. He did the story backwards. He did a song where he's a dollar bill. Where where a dollar bill was transported. I mean Nas, he did a song about fried chicken. Nasty. Nas is nasty. I mean that guy was insane. His lyrics are insane, and that's why he's literally literally one of the best. And he's my friend. A lot of people say he's the best. He's really good. He's really really good. Yeah, so that's that's cool to hear hear hear, hear your your intake on because I hear you talk about him a lot, but I've never really got delved into hey. Why is he your favorite? But now to see that, that, that it's not just, oh, he, he's a rapper out there rhyming with it, but he's lyrically sitting there saying, if you listen to my, me word for word, you'll get transported into this story, and these stories have meaning of why I wrote them and do them the way that I do them. Yep, exactly. That's what it is. Man, this has been one of, man, people, if y'all got this far into this podcast, episode 37, I got to say, it's been a ride, man, from video games to music to wrestling. And to see a little bit more of a slice of tea belly that you may not get get all the time, time time. You see it there, 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 because it's product. You watch his product. It's like watching, watch, 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 watching Fat Joe meet Stone Cold sitting there live streaming a video game for you. He's gonna be wild because there've been times where he's been like Stone Cold. Well, I've seen yeah, yeah, I mean, a, you know, smash a few and pass out. I do it all, man. I get some <laughs> drinks. I start getting crazy, wild, Stone Cold style. Um, yeah. we, we chilling with hip hop style sports. Sports mode, game mode, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, man. It's life. It's enjoy, enjoy the things around you. Like, right now I'm looking at a New York Giants freaking helmet. Behind me I got some sneakers that I love. I got video games right here, and there's a box of CDs right there. Not that we use CDs anymore, but if I wanted to, I could grab them. Yeah, man. That's that's phenomenal. It's like, if you, it's like I can say the same thing. I got 
desk right there, table right there. Three or four different consoles right there. I got music and music and Wolverine back there. I got a box full of, of, of other games and stuff over there. I got my closet, my Saint stuff, guitars, all that music stuff. It's like crazy. So, everybody, you might see a little slice in the stream right there, the little podcast right there, but we're all back and good and dandy and all that. So, getting to get a little slice of tea belly, 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 belly and all that from gaming to music to wrestling, his love of, of everything. Even he, even him sitting there, he mentioned the Giants, his favorite football team. You know, you know, you know sometimes they make him want to pull his hair out. But at the same time, he's going—he's one of those people that, through thick and thin, he's always going to love his team. 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 You know, being able to get on social media and uh, share your love for all these things and meet all these different pe- 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 people, you know, how has it impacted you as a per- 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 person? I would like to literally kind of get into that. And when I say impact you, it's like, how has it changed you? Because before you did this, you were just loving all this stuff and all that. But now you got a platform, whether it's YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, to share this with people. How do you feel about it and the people that you've made and come into your your life well it's made me a better person a um it's made me more compassionate you know because i i was very aggressive very always fun but very aggressive very very like laugh at you like get out of here type of now i'm more compassionate if somebody's not cool enough to be around yeah we'll let them hang around why not you know why not let them hang around if uh somebody's just way different yeah. so what you know hey we we both like games let's do it maybe we, i i can't do this with them what we're doing but i can at least send them a message here and there you know stop by say hello wherever they are it, it's made me a better person it made me it made me and it, honestly uh two of my three of my best friends came because of the content creating I, I'm a person that from the hood, it's like we we stick with our day ones, right? Day yes. one to day to you know cradle the casket, right? That's how we roll in the hood. But a lot of these people, they're not loyal to you. When you start elevating your life, a lot of people ain't there with you. They want to pull you back. And the people I've met in these communities of YouTube, basically YouTube, because I, I don't really do Twitch. I watch Twitch from YouTube content creating. These people have made me a better person. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. I mean, my I, I never thought I would have a best friend in North Dakota. You know what I'm saying? Shout shout to my man Solid Nate. You know, shout shout, you know, one of my one of my best friends, somebody that is totally opposite. We have a sim there is something we have share in common. There is one thing we have in common that we like. But outside of that, we're very different, very different demographics. And this has brought brought us to each other. I and mean, we literally we're brothers, you know what I'm saying? And so many like you and Phil and Dan and Jen and Die Hard, so many people, man, you know? Yeah. And so many people. So it that's what it's done for me. It's made me a better person, more accepting of people, more understanding of people. And it also shows me, also helped me realize a hater's gonna always hate. Jealous ones will envy, haters gonna hate. Amen. And at the end of the day, the truth always comes out. So yeah. mm-hmm. And another thing that it's made me realize is that back before I got to YouTube the way that was, obviously we internet started in like like the nineties and it started in the early two thousands when everybody started AOL, American Online, AIM, you know, Instant Messenger and all that. And then we got into the MySpace fate and then Facebook, right? And everybody thought, Oh, you're making all these friends on MySpace and then eventually Facebook and everybody thought, Oh, well those aren't real friends, they're just Facebook friends, they're just MySpace friends and all this. But then something that those platforms, no matter how much I use them or not, you know, use them in the past or not. Something that YouTube has done for me, no knock on any other platform, but YouTube's gave me more of a personal connection with somebody that a Facebook can't, because I can on Facebook see somebody's picture, see their post, see what they're doing on their personal life, if, I, if, if they allow me to be their Facebook friend. But YouTube kind of gives me more of a personal touch because I'm sitting there seeing somebody say, hey, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Hey, I'll pull it out right here. Hey, I love Halo so much that I bought this right here. That's Halo nice. 5. That's nice. You know, That's nice. Xbox and everything like that. And it's like, you get these personal conversations and these people say, well, you know, I got this Discord. Or, hey, here's my here's my number. Or, hey, however you want to contact them, they come in and say, and Listen. it's like, oh, okay. No, no, keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm listening. Yeah, you know, you get these personal conversations with people and all this, and it's like, no offense to the other platforms, but but YouTube really can give you the you 
and let and through the two, which is the internet, the power of the internet, as like Boogie Two Nine Eight would say or something like that. You get these connections with people because it's video and live form content that these other platforms don't focus on. And yeah, some of it's pre-produced and all that, where we sit there and we sit there and we have a script together or we have these little lines together for a live stream or a video. But you get these connections with people, and then we branch outside of it by going to these conventions and doing these things. And it's phenomenal that I get to meet people from New York, from Philadelphia, from some three of my great best friends and Miss K, and Mrs. Evil, and Logan over there in in California. And, and when we turn our camera off, our walks of life may be different. But we have something that connects us all, whether it's video games, music, wrestling, the clothes we wear, that connects us to all be that connection. It's it's the energy. It's energy. Good energy sticks together. Bad en- You notice there's certain people, they come around, you're like, nah, get out of here. That's bad energy. Yeah. I'm saying I'm, I'm blessed and gifted. That's beyond science. I'm blessed and gifted beyond science. So I, I won't get into that. But let's just say... I'm good energy, and there's only good energy with this. You know yeah. I'm saying? The bad energy, get the fuck out. And you notice, ain't no bad energy around me. I don't fuck with the bad energy people. They ain't around. You don't yeah. see that shit on, on this side, you know? But to to I wanted to chime in when you were talking before about people saying, why you show all these games? That's what it's about. We work hard, right? We make content. We work hard. Yeah. Like, this is my physical PS5 collection. The PS5 is not even a year old. And I'm missing a lot of games because uh financial reasons, but that's my PS5 collection right there. This whole stack. That's my physical PS5 collection. Send it on this I work hard for that. So best believe I want to come home and I want to see that and know that I, I put that there. Yeah. I bust my ass and, and put this on that shelf. Yeah, because- so if you're if you're a person that doesn't believe in and why you should have we we live one life. Right, we work hard. We work hard, but we work hard to play hard. Yeah, and I totally get that because whenever you go to that job, that that nine to five, seven to four, whatever you you call your shift, night, day, afternoon, third shift, second shift, you call candy clock out. Whether you go somewhere or whether it's even no offense to people at home, but sometimes it's even people at home. You know, I want to be. I I love connecting with people that show their love for things because I. I will say this. I don't want to get too much into it, but I will say this. No knock on anybody, but I sometimes can't to get into people that are YouTubers and people out there on social media that say they're the hardcore gamer or something like this, but yet they show nothing. They sit there and they show the game. Oh, I'm playing this game, doing this, doing that. But yeah, I'm like, oh, you got the, you say you got the physical, you say you got this big collection, but yet you don't show a lick of it. And they sit there and hype it all up, and it's just like, oh, you hype it all up, but I don't show. But yeah, I go to T Valley, and T Valley sit there and say. I got the physical and I got the digital version of this game. I got that, you know, they show their collection and yeah, we get a hard time for it. Oh, you're an adult and all this and you know, and in people's eyes, oh, you're po- you're an adult, you're supposed to be a gamer. You know, when we're the people that lived through the era of like the late 90s, early 2000s when gaming was not only big, but came bigger. People said, when you're coming adult, it's just gonna be a fad. You're gonna get all out of it. You're gonna go to your job and forget it, you know, have have wife, kids, whatever. But we, we stuck around doing that stuff, you know, we have it part of our everyday lives because when we're not sitting there and we've got stuff with the family done, we've got the job done, we've got what may helps us put the clothes on our backs, the roof over our head. We want to go to these games and transport ourselves to these different worlds, like Zelda, Kratos, Kingdom Hearts. It's playing Forza and have fun. And through the power of the internet, whether it's YouTube, the people, even to my friends over there on Twitch or Facebook gaming or Twitter or Instagram. I love being able to have these platforms to share that experience with you all. And I love being able to sit right here and have these conversations with people like T-Belly. And I appreciate friendships like T-Belly because these are friendships that aren't just here, but they're here. All day, every day. Let me let me share one thing. Um, this channel was also started in memory of a friend of mine that passed away. Rest in peace. King LVJ, before he died, before he, he died in an accident. An accident happened. He uh, he got ran over by a train. So before this, we spoke about The Legend of Zelda. And I said, man, I want to play through that whole series. At this time of my life, I've only played Zelda 1, Zelda 2, Ocarina of Time. That's all I played in my life. And I was still a Zelda fan. I said, man, I would love to play through that whole series. And he said, we should do it. 
He said, it's going to take forever. I said, let me at least play through the home console games. And from 2017, like January, I started. And while I was going on this YouTube journey, that's part of the reason I, will, I was buying older consoles so I can play the older Zelda games. I bought a Wii U so I can play Twilight Princess HD, Wind Wake HD. You know what I'm saying? Skyward Sword. You know, I, I bought these consoles so I can play these games because if not, I wouldn't have so many retro consoles. I really wouldn't because yeah. like even on the Switch, I get a whole library of NES games on the Switch and SNES. But to do this, to do this, this challenge, I had to do that and it, and it got me involved. And by the way, I did the challenge in um, 23 months. December 1st, 2018, I finished Skyward Sword on the Wii. That was the last game I had to do. And I beat every home console Zelda game at that point. Man. Every single one, including Hyrule Warriors. And um, that that's what it is. It's like you, you get into this world and now people are teaching you, J-Love sent me my NES. My first, my NES that I used, J-Love 81 sent me that. I wouldn't have an NES if it wasn't for her. I was gonna, I was using the NES Classic. She sent me that, and it opened up a new door to buy more games nice. and and get into that world. And it, it's all, it's all just a circle from doing this, you know. And that 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 that's what it's all about. You see how he started his channel through a love of that he had for his friend, but also to kind of remember his friend through Zelda games. But then, but then throughout that. He's made made many more memories as all his other friends and met people that he knows that hey because of that I've got to make my life better I've got to become a more compassionate person and I've got to meet and connect with all these different people and have experiences that I wish I could have had with that person because you know and all that but I can know in my heart that he's looking down on me and knowing that hey I'm doing doing the right thing and do and 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 and, it has blessed, and you have a blessed life. That's it. That's it, man. Yeah, man, man. It's been fun chit-chatting with you, man. And people, I'll let y'all know. When we get off camera, when we sit down and all that, these conversations, whether it's whatever platform or whatever little device we had on our phone, we have these conversations almost daily. There are days, days when it's the weekend, we're sitting there talking about the Giants, the Saints. When it's during the week, we're talking about, oh, I'm getting ready to stream this and this and this. I'm going live this. Hey, I'm shiny. Hey, hey, recently he's been in that pokey fever. I'm shiny hunting. What are you doing? I'm about to go stream. Watch Pokemon, over shiny Pokemon is, is high in my fucking level right now. I love that Pokemon. Yeah, I'm a man. Pokemon fan now. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's been fun, man. But uh, any more questions that maybe out of anything, music, wrestling, gaming, anything else you would like to ask yours truly? All right. Let's see. Let's see. What, what do I got to ask you? And even if you want to chime in when you ask these questions, what's your own little answer? Feel free, man. All right. So I know you you actually make music. Yeah. So when it comes to the artists that are signed, who's your favorite artist of all time? Oh, actually, I, I have two questions for you. Three, three. Who's your favorite artist of all time? What's your favorite album of all time? And what's your favorite movie of all time? That That's a tricky one right there. You know, that's a tricky one right there because he says, what's your favorite artist, but then what's your favorite album? Because there's been people out there that have a favorite artist, but they have their favorite album. It's not that artist. And that's crazy to say, but it's true. And then he, it threw, can happen, yeah. and he threw the ringer in there with the last one. So my favorite artist, it, you know, it used to not be the Foo Fighters, but over time it has become the Foo Fighters. Not just because, oh, oh Dave Grohl and all this, but the, but the whole essence of Foo Fighters, it came out of the tragedy of Nirvana and Nirvana and the guy said hey I, I don't feel like making music and then he felt like you know what he thought about it and the music was the only thing that made him made him get back out of the bed out of doing all this stuff and the first album if you listen to that first Foo Fighters album you may see him go live and have all these people with him but that first album bass guitars drums he played everything on that and then, you know and everything like that and it was phenomenal to see that you know and throughout the years he, he's basically in the light light because that guy got so big and the reason he called it the food fighters is he didn't want people to know that it was oh i'm the drummer of nirvana i'm out here making it out he called it the food fighters make it look like it's this big expansive band and all and then now he's had all these other people and what's cool about him is that all these other people people from metallica to food to, to tom petty to this person to that person have allowed him to come on stage and play with them and it's like and it's like dude if I look at That's somebody awesome. like if I look at somebody like that, 
if I can sit there and and sit there and have three wishes, or somebody says, "Hey, what if you could be any celebrity in the world?" It, it, it'd be like I'd say either Chris Jericho or I'd say say Dave Grohl because they do everything that I currently do just on a massive level, you know? Yeah. And it'd be like, wow. and it'd be like, and it's just something in connection. It was awesome. I got to put this in there before I get to the, my favorite album. I remember going and seeing the Foo Fighters right before in 2019, before the pandemic hit. And I remember, and I was actually got there early enough to get with my ticket to get in the crowd little part of it, you know, the floor part where you stand up, yeah. you stand up for you get to the stadium. And they said, okay, go right down there and vote. And I was probably seven to 10 people maybe out from the stage where he was. And man, it was a phenomenal show. And when you talk about people say, oh, rock and roll is dead, all this stuff because of all the hip hop and everything like that, which, which I'm a fan of hip hop. I like a Jay-Z, um, a Tupac. I like I like a Daddy Yankee. All these different things. I like what they do. What they do out there, you know. Paul Wall. Even though you know he has the biggest thing in the world, but I did like when his stuff was bigger. You know, I did yeah. like that stuff. It's just that they say rock's dead, but then you go see these rock shows, and no offense to rap, sometimes they outwork a rap show because rap, you know, you know, and it's phenomenal to see what these guys do because just like with YouTube. You think, oh, going live is going is, is oh the game's on my TV right here. Let me hit this button over here on my computer and I'm live. No, it's a lot more to it. It's a lot more learning these songs, learning these things, and going out there. So I got to give it to Dave Grohl and the Food Fighters being my favorite mm-hmm. band artist, slash artist. Yeah, nice. And if I had to say my favorite album, album, it would probably be, hmm, it would probably be one, either Slim Shade. It's I can't really. It's hard to choose one. It'd be Slim Shady. It could be Slim Shady's album whenever he came out with a Slim to the Slim Shady show, or whatever it was. On the Slim Shady LP. Yeah, yeah, the one in the early two thousands, I think it was like two thousand nine, something like that. Which but, one? The one, uh, the one that he killed his wife, or the the one that um. I'm trying to think, because it's been so long since I've since, since I've seen the cover. Yeah. Of and I remember it's like it was like I remember him coming out there and it was all these songs and he was just a boom boom videos with it. It was like the one that's got the real Slim Shady on it, the, that one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, no, Marshall Mathers LP, his second album. Yeah, yeah that was that was a classic. Because I remember him that... coming out there, and I'm watching, and at that time, that's before MTV got into like, which I think MTV should name themselves multimedia television, not music, because they don't do music as much except during exactly. the morning times. But I remember going, waking up, and go going to like middle school, and like right there at the, you know, and all that, and seeing who oh, is real some shady playing on TV all the time. That's back when they were. The and then I remember him doing a song with Dre out there, how you know, and all that, and. And pe- pe- good stuff. Dre signed him, but then he to pay Dre back. He said, "Dre's not dead. Here you go, a song for you." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he look. He started. Let me tell you, that album is so good. He started the album with this. I th- I believe I could be wrong. The first song in the album was "Who Knew," and he started the song. He started his album like this. I don't do black music. I don't do white music. I make fight music for high school kids. <laughs> like that's how he started his album. Yeah. That's like, I don't do black music. I don't do white music. I do and, fight music. <laughs> like yo, and the reason that, crazy. And the reason that album connects so much is because that time period. It makes me remember that that time period of seeing him and then him help bringing Dre into it and then and then him bring, and then him doing what Dre did to him was Fifty Cent. And I'm thinking of all this stuff. And then he did D12. And I'm thinking, man, that album. I remember those music videos. I'm the real some shady. This this and then Superman and all this stuff. And it's like that, yeah. that stuff is like visually like. In there, so like yeah, that whole, then, I mean, it was a legend. I mean, that's that's what's and, up. So it's a so your favorite album is a rap album. That's dope. And what's cool about that album, and you know, you know, I'm gonna get to another album in just a second. Is that I remember whenever uh they started giving out iPods and all. I got one of those little iPod minis. It was like a little square thing. A little square. And I remember, I know, I know. remember, and it, you know, I remember whenever I went down to a- Apple, I, I, Eminem was one of the first artists I looked up, and I got his whole catalog on it and started it was bumping it. Nice. Now, outside of that, if I had to say another al- album, because 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 it's hard for me to sit there and just say one, because because I'm a, so much of a variety person, I would probably say say Green Day and American Idiot, because that was 2004. I remember that was the first album that I remember because my brother brother helped me and uh and all that helped me get listen to the um Marshmallow. I remember getting money, going into the store and saying, hey, I saw this music video of American Idiot. Who's the, who's the artist that did it? And they said Green Day. And I went and bought that album. And I remember having an old gray stereo that had two, that had two speakers, had, had a six CD changer in it, which which y'all don't even, some people don't even know what a CD changer is now. Six CD yeah, changer yeah. in it. And I put the CD in there. 
and I blast that music in my room. The same room that I remember sitting down with my old CRT playing through Kingdom Hearts right there. And it was because I had my TV on one side and my stereo on the other side and my bed in the middle of the room. And it was just blasting. It was phenomenal. So That's I had to awesome. say, so I had to say Eminem's album, Martial Matters, and, and American Eat, my two favorite albums of all time. Nice. Nice. Really nice stuff. And as I, I remember when they first came out, I remember Green Day's very first song. They were like in a... In the Insane Asylum Hospital, that was the music video, and they were playing the music there. Oh, yeah, that was in the I early believe... 90s, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, re I remember when they first came out. I remember um, Green Day when they first came out. Like, that's the thing with me. I'm a hip-hop fan, but I have knowledge of a lot of other music, and rock was one of them. I fucked with Green Day, with Creed, with um, uh, these guys. Uh, shit. They're like my favorite. I can't even think of their name. I'll get to them in a second, but Green Day... Creed, uh, some 41, uh, obviously, um, these guys, Aerosmith, legendary, they were sick. Mm -hmm. Aerosmith was sick. Limp Biscuit, Kid Rock, but, um, there was this one group, and I can't think of the name of the group, but, um, oh my God, I, they, they're such an important rock group, and I can't think of their name, <laughs> but, uh, let's, let's just say, um, their the song that caught me was a song where it was a bullet they shot a bullet in the music video and the bullet was going through all these things it's oh that, 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 that was corn corn there you go that's corn the that did, that's the dude that don't like, like like the rap kind of stuff right there but it's like metal rap stuff and he said yeah, yeah going corn, <laughs> i actually had their album that was the only rock album i've ever owned was corn that that was a crazy yeah, you speak about 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 earlier Nas going through through talking about like a gun and all that and the, and the stuff and that 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 video right there was actually you seeing the bullet come out of a gun and go shoot through there and go and and he's sitting there rap, rap doing the rock rap thing while it's going that's phenomenal. Yeah, that was good good times, man. Yeah. Good times. Now to the last question he asked me, my favorite movie, which I want to know what your favorite movie is after I answer mine, is. That's a, that, that's a hard thing, because, I mean, one of my favorite movies of all time with Joe Pesci and everybody in it is um, Goodfellas. Oh, yeah, Goodfellas, Goodfellas baby. Let's man. go. That, Let's that, fucking that movie go. touched right here. It, it touched me so much right here that whenever, a few years ago, Netflix did The Irishman, which was kind of like that, and it, that's a long movie, if you ever... I haven't seen movie. Irishman yet, believe it or not. That movie is in reverence of Good, Goodfellas. That's a phenomenal movie on Netflix. Mar 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 Scorsese, that's why. Mar Scorsese. Yeah, that but I gotta say, say either, either it either be Goodfellas, and 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 I, I I'd probably say Goodfellas because I was gonna sit there and say like maybe like Pulp Fiction or something like that or like um, Shawshank Redemption because Shaw because I, I every time Shawshank Redemption on I've watched that since I was a little kid with my dad. That's like one of his favorite movie, and me and him watch that movie all the time, and I love how it, how how it is how you know because that story in that movie is crazy how he goes to jail and all this and then they. And these people all get the same apartment, and you see the little notches up there that where the story goes. And at the end of it, the guy finally goes to the same spot to buy this, get fives the money in the little area, and they go out and they're sitting there on the beach at the end of the movie. That's phenomenal how that movie. You gotta watch that movie to see it. You know, some of the greatest mm -hmm. actors of all time are in that movie. But that and Goodfellas are phenomenal movies. And Goodfellas, if you have not seen that movie, Joe Pesci, everybody's in that movie is phenomenal, top of the line actors. Love Goodfellas, love it. I love mafia movies. So my favorite movie, I love mafia movies. They're pretty much, they call it crime drama. That's yeah. the genre, crime drama. That's so, so lame. But I call them mafia, mob movies, mafia movies, mostly mob movies, but crime drama. <laughs> For the crime, crime dramas are like my favorites. Yeah. Goodfellas is in there, which Goodfellas, it's a crime drama that has a lot of funny things in there. It's kind of a comedy too, but it's crime, crime um, drama. Yeah. Uh, there's a movie called The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke. Phenomenal movie. There's a movie called a um, The Laws of Dogtown. Where it's about the it's about the some skaters. The guy that taught Tony Hawk. It's oh, about yeah, that's, that's Tony Hawk's teacher. Yeah, I remember Those that are, movie. Yeah, there's some really great movies that are drama movies that are just fun. Obviously, the hood movies like Friday's a comedy, but then you have Boys in the Hood. But my favorite movie of all time, some gangster shit. And it's basically the rise from the bottom to the top. And it's like, this is how I'm living life. I'm still trying to get to that point where I'm sitting in my motherfucking jacuzzi cigar in my mouth 
with my fine shorty right there talking shit to me. Scarface, my favorite movie of all time. Wow. Scarface. Al Pacino. Al Pacino, Scarface, baby. That's my movie. It's not a, it's not a Martin Scorsese movie, but it's definitely a crime drama, and I it, love it. It has a love it has, Scarface. It, it has a feel that you could think that'd be like a movie if he was at that time. They would would make movies like that. Yeah, and that's that's why like Vice City is so dear to my heart, GTA, because Vice City has a lot of Miami Vice and Scarface in the movie. You know, yeah. so yeah, Vi Scarface is my favorite movie of all time. I own like almost every copy of it. I mean, I'm a fan. Yeah, I remember, I remember my dad having a cop that copy of it one year, and it was back when they had like they had like like the metallic like covers on it, and it was like a shiny, and it was like black, and it was like silver, and it had him in the middle of it, it was like the red, and I remember seeing that, and I was like Scarface, like that looks so cool. That way, yeah. it's a good movie. You, you should, if you never seen it, you should check it yeah, out. It's yeah, fun. I, I've seen the movie like two, two or three different times, and it's a phenomenal movie. It's really fun, fun movie, man. Because yeah, when you see those movies like Scarface or Goodfellas or uh, The Godfather, those movies are phenomenal movies from top to bottom. And I can't say yeah. say enough about those movies. You know, they not be for everybody. And I'm kind of like him. I don't really like how they categorize them. It's, it's a mob. Those are mob esque movies. But they're phenomenal movies. And they're, they're phenomenal movies, man. When people say things like Star Wars, their favorite movie, Lord of the Rings, um, Lion King, and it's like, these are great movies, but like, that's, it, it's just so simple. Those are just simple movies. This is like, these movies are just complex movies. They're just more yeah. life-driven movies. It's like, how can you not like them? How's your favorite movie? Like, for, my favorite movie is, is Black Panther. I'm like, a, a, a superhero movie? Like, what? You know, it's like, but um, yeah, that's that's our thoughts. You like Goodfellas, I like Scarface. Two classics, man. Yeah. Must watch classics. Yeah, man. It's just it's just the way the good way. The, my favorite part, one of my favorite parts in Goodfellas, is when the dude's sitting there, sitting there next to the, at the table, like the little waiter dude comes over there out of that other thing and asks him what it was, and he just pulls up and shoots the dude. I'm just like, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> which like, one? The, the the one when he shoots the kid in the leg? Yeah, the little kid that's back there working for him. And yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and I remember that part. Cause yeah, because the kid, he played in Sopranos. That kid is in Sopranos. Yeah, that kid, he ended up being, yeah. You know, they recently just, I've never seen this, seen an episode of Sopranos, and they recently just started showing it on HBO again because, like, they got, like, the movie, I guess, coming out or whatever. Yeah, next month, yeah. You know, and that, movie, days, yeah. and that movie looks really, really good, so I'm going to have to go see it. But I started watching the episode of Sopranos, and I'm like, man, why did I watch this, man? I got to watch it you need, You need to watch it, but Sopranos is ahead of its time. It's like Goodfellas. It's... It's every week is an episode. It's my, it's my, it's crime drama. It's a dope movie, really dope. And um, if you love Goodfellas, you're gonna love it. All of all of those actors are in these movies. They're in Goodfellas. They're in Donnie Brasco. They're in Casino. You're gonna see Ray Liotta. You're gonna see Joe Pesci. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, Al Pacino. These guys are all yeah. over the place. They're not in Sopranos, but I'm just saying all the other actors from the movies. They're all in Sopranos, like literally all of them. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's great to see these kind of movies. But now to kind of round everything out, so don't take up all your time. When it comes to everything that you've done on YouTube, social media, and everything like that, it's been fun to see you talk about video games, music, wrestling, and all that. And when we get said and done, I'm going to have to do some editing, get some things worked out, and then y'all going to be able to see all of this. So if you do get make it this far in this and you do see this, leave a comment what you thought about this, me and T-Belly talking and all that. Would you like to see us again or anything like that? You know, Would you ever want to be on here? Let me know down in the comment section of this. But to kind of give a few more questions to T-Belly, I'd like to know, is there anything that you have future that you want to sit there and stream for the chance? You know, these are games. Hey, I want to stream this and share this experience with my audience. See, I, I used to hate doing this because people copy me. Anything I say, they start doing. Ah, okay. But now, since I don't have as many viewers as I used to, because I had so many channels watching me, now that I have more views, I can honestly say I'm going to be doing the whole God of War saga from the beginning to the end. I'm going to do the whole saga nice. on stream. Nice. All of them in order. So we're going to start with God of War Ascension. So, so yeah, are we're going to do the whole... Are you just doing the console versions? Uh, no, every the whole saga. We're going to do uh, God of War Ascension on PS3. God of War Chains of Olympus, PS3 version. God of War 1, PS3 version. God of War... Wait, God of War 1, PS3. God of War Ghost of Sparta, PS3. God of War 2, PS3. And then on PS4, we're going to play God of War 3. 
remastered, yeah. and then we're gonna finish it with God of War 2018. Okay. We're gonna play through the whole thing. Okay. I thought you were going to get like into like on the PSP or something like that. No, no, we're doing the whole story, everything cuz it's it's literally one story. I'm doing the whole story straight. Good. 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 Okay. Yeah, cuz some people say they're going to do the whole thing and then it's like certain things it's like it's like was you for like also those other like Zelda, it's kind of hard to get some of those handheld games, you know, you know, you know to be able to get that way, but the, but you did get through all the console versions, which was cool, you know. And yeah, I beat I beat them all. Uh, I just recently beat Ghost of Sparta for the Second time. I beat them all before, um, but I'm playing through them again. I'm actually going for the platinum trophies. Nice. So so Ghost of Sparta is next, and then God of War Ascension. I will have every platinum of every God of War game. Yeah, and something that, 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 that a lot of people don't get is that when you watch him stream the game, which is cool, that some people, they just stream a game to stream a game. Some people stream a game because they love the game, and they say, hey, I love this game. It's one of my favorite series. I grew up on it. But I like when he streams a game. Is that if, why, if it's a new game like Dead Space, he's learning the game and he's sharing his love for the game and his learning of the game and why he didn't play it back in the day and a little story with you while you're going through it. But then when he played like he's played God of War, he played one of the older God of Wars I think last year, the year before on his channel. And what was cool about it is that he said and he when he was doing it and the game's giving you lore and he's going through these cutscenes, but he's also giving you his connection with the lore and what he's seen whenever he watched like them make like the little. Uh, PlayStation movie that they made where they talked about God of War 2018 and all this and why he's playing the older God of War, how he sees it, the transition, why they went this way and he's giving you a little bit more insight into the stuff instead of just the generic stuff that everybody gives you and it's cool to see that. Yeah, thank you man, I appreciate that. You know, that, that's one of the reasons that, 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 that I love your stream so much. I want everybody to know that. It's one of the reasons I love your stream so much. It's not just, oh, he gets drunk or oh, he goes out there and doesn't know Death Run. Or, oh, he goes out there and beats Punch Man in, in, in record time, which he can do all that. It's the it's the it's the it's the way that he presents it all, and he also adds a little bit of flair of his own self in there with lore and stuff like that, and his, you know, and everything like that. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I just do me. I don't, I don't follow no script. I don't I don't plan. I just go. You I, don't know think, what I'm saying? I don't think anybody That's can it. ever make a script. Not even Martin Scorsese or nobody can make a script on how to do a two belly stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we've done it all. I mean, we we we've hurdled sofas. We've gotten naked. We've beaten the hardest games. We've done it all. Party, serious, any kind of stream. We've done. I've done it all, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> There's yeah, no so, limits. Yeah. So, um, um, you've asked me questions. I've asked you questions. So, kind of leave everybody on a note. If somebody, if you had to tell anybody, like like in a few words or maybe a paragraph or two, what is the Tea Belly Show to you? And, and, you know, and what is the future? And maybe in addition to that, the second part, what is the future? What is the future? If you can kind of, what is the T-Belly show to you? But also at the same time, I've said this before to other people. When you look at the future, where do you kind of want to go with the T-Belly show? Kind of, you don't have to reveal everything, but where kind of, where do you want to go with it? Well, the T-Belly show to me is my brand and my product that I deliver to the world. Yes. And... The whole the whole point of it, of it is this: uh, when you beat a game like Battletoads, yes. which most people can't beat, it changes your life, and you you get this killer instinct in you that you just don't want to quit, and that's the whole point of the channel. I show you, hey, we'll start at the bottom, but when it's all said and done, we'll be on top of that mountain. Okay. It took Mike Tyson to beat me five hundred times. Most people can't beat Mike Tyson. I learned him by myself. No strategy guide, no internet video. I learned it myself, did it myself. And let me tell you, when you finally jump over that hurdle, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And video games are a lot like life. Some people just play it for fun. I play to win because life is not, life is short, man. You want to win. You don't want to be a loser in life. And that's one thing with Battletoads that changed me. You never stop. You never yeah. give up. And that's that's where I want my channel to go. We we never stop. We keep going until I'm done. When I'm bored, I say, okay, there's nowhere else to go. That's when we stop. So until then, I'm going to keep going. Even if it's on another platform, I'm going to keep going. Because it's not about me becoming a million subscriber channel. It's not about that. It's about me taking on every challenge and showing you all that you can do it too. If you put your heart and soul into it, you can do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
That is definitely, definitely, definitely good, 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 good thing, you know. So, like, if there's anybody, say, say, say somebody new came in, you know, and they saw you, and this is the last question I got, unless you got anything else you want to put out there or say, or you got another question you want to ask me. Say somebody new came out there and they saw you and they got inspired by, say, a stream or a video they saw yours, and they were to ask you, hey, t better. What kind of tips and tricks would you give to a new guy that wants to go out there and, and stream? And say he's in his 20s, 30s, something like that, and he's a guy going out there, or even maybe younger, but he wants to go out there and start streaming or something like that. What kind of tips would he say, hey, this is me, this is what I would do for your experience? Would you tell somebody, hey, be like you start with a phone, or would you say, hey, go out there and go get the latest, greatest gear? Or would you say, hey, just whatever you would give advice? What get advice would you give somebody to start in and out? Well, it's very simple advice. What is your goal? That's number one. What is your goal? What, what do you, where do you want to be? What's the max that you want with your product? Now, once you figure out what your max is, then you do your homework, right? And you bring the best effort to get this. And just make sure on your road there, you're having fun. Because if you go like this, you're still having fun. And there's no loss in having fun. But just know where you want to go. So then after you know where you want to go, do your research and come correct. Because I tell people all the time, people don't admit to this. Everybody wants to become a full-time streamer. Everybody wants to become a full-time content creator, make a living doing this. So if you want to do that, look at the best, master what they do, and replicate it with your own sauce. And that's it. That's all I can tell you. But make sure you're having fun. So if you fail, like many of us do, at least you had fun. At least you can build friendship out of this. That is great saying. That is a great saying. Replicate. Look at the best. Look at what's already basically there. Replicate it, but then put your own sauce. It's the same thing you could sit there and say if you ever want to go be in music, if you're making food. Because you think somebody goes out there and makes wings. You know, they everybody makes wings, right? But then there's this guy that says, hey, I want to do the hot ones. I want to do this, but men make a cha- make the best wings, but also put a challenge onto it. And he just, he just replicated what was already done out there, say, Buffalo Wild Wings, but then he put a challenge next to it and said, hey, let's go through it all, you know? And it's just different things that you could try. That's excellent advice. You know, you right. just got, because if you go out there, you just see somebody do something saying, oh, I can do that. And then you go do that. You know, no offense, but some, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to fall flat on your face if you don't do your research. You're thinking, well, I've got a PS4, I figured out how to live stream and, and I can play Call of Duty or I can play God of War and get all these people to come watch me, you know, because I play it better than that person. But then that person may have a personality that you aren't putting out there, you know, and that's why they got what they got, you know. It's not their, their gameplay because when you go watch these people that stream to anybody out there, you go watch some streams, some streams it is the gameplay, some streams it is the personality, and then when you go to watch something like a T-Belly or a me, and I'm, not, and I'm just saying this from experience. We're a little bit of that middle where it's the, what you see in the gameplay, but it also is the personality that's there as well. You know? Sure, right. That's what's up. Yeah, it's real shit right there, man. Yeah, man. But so, so it's been a great, great conversation. Anything and all that. I've been, I love this definitely. You know, me and you going to be friends for life, you know, you know, you know, and everything like that. Anything else for you want to say? Say anything else you want to say out there? Any more, if you got any more questions for me, anything? Put it out oh, no, that's about it, man. It's about to be 2 a.m. over here on my side, so pretty much ready to wrap this up. But thank you for having me. I don't do podcasts. I don't do them. I do my own podcast as a late bloomer. Loved it. I don't do these things. But for Chris Levi 13, we had to do this. We had to do this. You know what I'm saying? Because there's something that I do. There's something that I say that I think Chris can agree agree with. It ain't about me. It ain't about him. It's about we. Because yeah. we the best, and we bought this life. And I got to say, thank you for being here, T-Belly. Thank you for being gracious enough to do this. I know you don't do podcasts and all that, you know, and I know it's late in your area because we're an hour difference and all that, you know, but I appreciate you being coming on here, you know, and I got to say, people, for people like him and through all this thing, things like this, you know, I helped him get through it. He mentioned it earlier. I helped him get through the pandemic. People like him. Help me get through this pandemic. Even right now, whenever I have personal things happen with my parents, if you know, you know, going on, people like them have helped me be able to get up out of that bed, be able to sit here in this chair, do this podcast, and even go out there and work my job to make that moolah to come in and 
provides that's it, you. yeah. Let's do it. You know, so All right, brother, but thank, thank you, you all for man. Thanks here. for having me, man. Um, the last thing I want to ask you is uh, plug your uh, social media. So if you want anybody to come follow you, check you out, plug that. Your YouTube link and all that will be down there in the description box. Well, we'll plug yourself for a second. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, make sure to follow me on Twitter. First and foremost, I could talk, I talk the most shit on Twitter because it's based off the YouTube channel. So it's T Belly the Show, T Belly D A, not T H E D A, and then Show. T Belly the Show on Twitter, and then on Instagram. If you want more of the uh, lifestyle of T Belly, follow me on Twitter at Rockstar Belly. <laughs> Rockstar Belly, baby. You can follow me right there. Look me up, Rockstar Belly. You should be able to find me. I don't know my Twitter hand. I don't know my IG handle, but um, Rockstar Belly. You'll find. Oh, my. It's T B the show. So D A show again, but it's T B. So I'm saying instead of T Belly the show on Instagram, it's T B D A and then show. Or you could just look up Rockstar Belly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a gracious guest, everybody. Like I said, it's been a little bit of a rocky road, but I'm glad that he's back here on the podcast. Remember last episode was a pre-recorded episode that I did. Just get some stuff out there. I definitely will have some more guests on the episode as well, some more solo episodes, and a lot of more stuff coming to the channel as things kind of ease ease up here. Because if you know, you know. I'm not going to get into that because this episode is all about my buddy T-Belly. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here, T-Belly. Anyway, all y'all, my links will be down there in the description box below. Below T-Belly's links to his... um. YouTube and his Twitter, I'll definitely have them both down there. So in case you didn't hear what he said and you want to say, hey, I want to have something to click on, there you go. And I'll see you in the next one. Remember, to always grow your knowledge, your friendships, and have fun in a seven-day week. If you, if you can't do the May Day, be able to squeeze it in every day. But within a seven-day week, if you can do all that, you can have a good life. And why do I say that? Because growing your knowledge, meaning something you're doing is getting your mind going. Friendships meaning your family may not always be able to be there for you because sometimes families are the way they are. But you got people out there that you know you can count on and having fun means you're doing something fun. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video and our stream and stay awesome. Woo!